He do. Looking left. Goes into the edge. It's up again. He hits the turf. And Devon oh, scoops it up. Cameron Wilkins. Right. It's, it's on the eight, eight, eight. Ten, five. Touchdown. Let us broadcast your team. Send an email to Merle at GameMaxSports.com or Chuck at GameMaxSports.com to find out how. Side, he's got blockers in front of him. Touchdown. Five. Touchdown. Let's it's what we do. And nobody does it better. We are KMAX Sports. It's the most exciting time for high school sports by far. Opening night and students, alumni, parents, and fans of all ages will come out in droves all over the country. The sound of the marching bands, the fresh smell of popcorn and hot dogs, along with the crunching sounds of bone tingling hits will provide a perfect, perfect atmosphere for high school football lovers. High school stadiums all over the country are gearing up for tonight for a start of another high school football season. No different here at KMAX Sports and Fight Media. We will christen in the 2018 season off with a matchup of the Liberty Hill Panthers taking on a new neighbor just a few miles down the road where we sit in the Glen Grizzlies. Is this the start of a new rivalry? It could be. Good evening, listeners, and welcome to Panther Stadium in Liberty Hill for a football game with christening off KMAX Sports with Vite Media and welcoming back to the booth my old friend and old partner, I uh, don't mean to use old lightly, Greg Ceridi. Greg, welcome back. Tim, what a beautiful night for a football game. We are here at beautiful Panther Stadium in Liberty Hill. People are out on the field, cheerleaders out on the field, players running around. Tim, there was about 150 kids that just ran the length of the football field. The young future Liberty Hill Panthers, they love to do it every, every, before every home game. They make the trek. We love to watch them. We love to watch them go. And as the stadium is filling up, Tim, packed house tonight for the opener. And it's senior night. It is at an odd time to do senior night, doing it beginning of the season, but they've done it tonight. They uh, honored and uh, talked about all the seniors, every senior on the uh, football team and involved in the program uh, was announced tonight and their parents came out and it was a great thing. And now that's over with. But Greg, you haven't been to the stadium before, uh, once with me about three weeks ago, but th this is much different than the atmosphere that we called in or the stadium that we called in before. Well, Tim, nobody can stop Liberty Hill at the scrimmage we watched. There was no defense. So there's gonna be somebody out there tonight trying to stop them. Uh, see if these Glenn Grizzlies can, can give, them, give it a whirl. Um, but this stadium, Tim, absolutely beautiful out here. We're in a nice skybox here, up above the almost the 50-yard line. Tim, we're on the 40. It's, it's pretty close to the. We're like a mile up. We're like it's mile high up here. It's, it's pretty, pretty high. So high up here, you can see the whole dang stadium. You know, the, my, the best view right now that I have, Tim, and you, you know, you know, I love it. The, the, the Liberty Hill run through, the giant black panther on top of the Liberty Hill run through. Those guys are fixing to come through it here, Tim. And, uh, See if they can open up the season right. Well, Liberty Hill's playing a brand new school. Uh, they do have seniors at this school, but technically tonight is history making for them. This is their first, I would say, official uh, kickoff to their, they're now in a district. Um, they're playing a full schedule this year, and this is going to be, this is groundbreaking territory for them as well. And they literally, Greg, you don't know where the school is, but if we get focused enough, we probably could see the, 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 the buildings from here. The view is fantastic. This is the best view of Liberty Hill probably anywhere in the city, uh, and, and it is it is absolutely amazing. The only, uh, Marble Falls has a similar type of, of view uh, looking out over the hill country, but this is this is amazing. But this new school, uh, you know, they're setting traditions now. Greg, I, I don't know if you've ever been a part of a new program, but can you imagine some of the things that are going through these kids' kids' minds right now as they prepare to take on Liberty Hill? A lot of firsts, a lot of pride. You really are the first football team to take the stadium, to take the field for your school. Um, you, you just got to have a, a lot of pride in that, Tim. I, you know, you played in a school where, you know, guys have played a long time before you. So yep. did I. It was, you know, it was a tradition is already set. And these guys here trying to set some new traditions. Here they come through the run through. They got, Tim, four or five flags running out there on the field. Uh, Grizzly flags, American flags, the Texas flag, of course. Right. Uh, they, they look ready to go. Now, Greg, 
uh, the Panthers are about to come onto a field, and it's significant in them coming onto the field because as the years that you and I called, all the players did was run through a sign, and everybody else had this big inflatable. Tonight, Liberty Hill has an inflatable. Your thoughts? The script has flipped, and now the, the, the Grizzlies had to run through the paper, <laughs> and, and, and here are the Liberty Hill Panthers. And if we could go back in time and, and listen true. to us <laughs> lament about how, how we didn't have the run through, and here it is, Tim Lebrun. The program, solid program, years of success. You get a run through. That's how it works. You, you do well on the and field. And it's not EDO inflatable. It is it is actually a panther sitting on top of a tunnel in uniform. It, it's pretty impressive. It's 20 feet high at least. It's 20 it, feet high at least. That's it, a big fan. That is. And here they come. The Panthers running onto the field. And 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 again, uh, we talked about it back old school back in. Uh, Greg and I had the uh, opportunity and, and we're very fortunate to call the 2007 uh, state championship run. Uh, and, you know, we talked about it back then that they didn't have an inflatable when all other people did. And, and it wasn't about the hype of the inflatable. Liberty Hill has always been about uh, just basics, fundamentals, old school. Matter of fact, just tonight we were talking to uh, uh, another gentleman that's broadcasting for the Glen, Glen Grizzlies, and he was talking about how the formations and the style of football of Liberty Hill is reminiscent of 1970s. And absolutely, that's absolutely correct. Ladies Absolutely. Time, I mean, we ask that you rise. Tim. Pause for a moment of silence. It looks like we're going to pause. We humbly ask that you lose the men and women serving all right. our country. We'll be right all back. All You're listening to Panthers forces, football as well as on K9 Sports Fight Media Network. And emergency services. Please remain standing. And now we will have the national anthem for the scene from the national anthem played by the Liberty Hill High School High School Marching Band. Sign the lyrics of the Liberty Hill High School Sign Language Student.
Queen has won the toss. Liberty Hill tonight is in their perfect jersey. And the Lakers will receive the ball to start the game. Liberty Hill collects the team to South Dole. Ladies and gentlemen, we are set for the kickoff. White jerseys with blue and orange on them, more like a little bit like um, would you say that's like Bronco colors or Denver Bronco colors or more like Boise State colors? A little more Boise State, yeah. a little more Boise State. Not, not sharp looking uniforms too. Yep. Is, uh, the, the the white of the of the Glen team opposed here by the purple of the you know the familiar purple of the Liberty Hill Panthers. Mm -hmm. The kickoff team jumping around here, ready to get out there and get after it. The sun setting here in Liberty Hill. Beautiful night for football. Right. Uh, and and the, the tower that we're up in, uh, overlooking the stadium, giving a nice shade from about the 20-yard line to the 10-yard line on the other side. So uh, a lot of shade out there right now, which isn't too bad. Liberty Hill's taking the field. Grizzlies taking the field. Grizzlies are going to return the ball. The Grizzlies are going left to right. Uh, the Panthers are defending the south end zone. Kicking off for the Panthers is Matthew Shipley. Kicking for the Panthers is number one. Matthew Back Shipley. deep for Back deep the Grizzlies Shipley. is Sam Martin and Sam Drew McGuire. Back deep. Sam Martin. Shipley has the ball teed up at the 40-yard line, right in the center of the field. And we are underway for Panther football. The kick is deep. It is back. Sam Martin receives it in the end zone. Just going to take a knee and bring the ball out. And kickoffs and kickoff returns are going to be talked a lot about this high school, college, and pro season. Uh, as a lot of rules are, are being changed to, uh, you know, try to reduce the amount of injuries and head injuries. Right now, uh, old school, the ball would come out to the 20. Uh, now it's come out to the 25. Great kick by Shipley. He got a hold of that one and sent it about five yards deep into the end zone. No chance for the return uh, on that kick. Drew McGuire is the quarterback for the Grizzlies. They're in a spread formation. Julian Morris is right next to him in the backfield. In motion comes Corian Thompson, Thompson to the right. McGuire takes a snap, hands off to Thompson to the left-hand side. He picks up five, six, seven, eight yards before he's brought down. It'll be second down and about two. Ball's now over to the 30 to the 33-yard line. Corian Thompson, backup quarterback. All-around athlete, Tim, plays receiver and the backup quarterback. Got a lot of speed there off the edge. Pick up a seven. Second and two. McGuire takes a snap, hands off right up to big Julian Morris. He bounces off, goes to the outside, and the Panthers are going to bring him down for a loss of about two yards, and the Panther defense swarmed him. They actually played that play very well. Great team defense. That, that play started up the middle, and it stopped soon thereafter. Great job by the middle of that. Three Brings up a third down and five. Third down and five from the 30-yard line. Morris in the backfield with quarterback Drew McGuire. McGuire rolls out to the right-hand side, throws it, completes it. There's a flag down on the play. The pan pass is complete to Sam Martin out over the 40 to the 41-yard line. But there's a flag in the backfield. It's going to be holding, and it's going to come back, and we're going to repeat third down. Great pitch and catch, though. Wide open was Martin. He uh, he hauled it in, but you have to think he was open, Tim, because of the hold. That's going to back it up to the spot of the foul, or is it just from the line of scrimmage? Line of scrimmage is going to bring it back to the 20-yard line. So now we're looking at third and 15. The Grizzlies got off to a good start with a great first down play, but now find themselves backed up to the 20 yard line. Watch out for the screen here. Watch out for something that's gonna go short and then they're trying to see if they can break it a little bit. McGuire is changing the play at the line of scrimmage. Three wide outs to the right, one to the left. McGuire takes it, fakes hands off, looks downfield. 
Now under pressure, throws out to the outside. It is complete, but just to the 30-yard line. Sam Martin on the catch. They get 10 of that back. It's going to bring up fourth down and five from the 30-yard line. Great coverage by Trenton Seward out there. They kept him in front. So much you have to talk about. We're going to play to the line to the, to the line to get the first down. That's what Liberty Hill did there. Great job, great job of, of getting off the field in four or five plays. Grizzlies getting ready to punt back deep for Liberty Hill is Wyatt Cheney. He is standing at his own 37-yard line. Snap is back. It's good. The kick is a sh little bit shank out to the outside. It's going to go out of bounds and way in favor of Liberty Hill as they're going to get the ball in. Grizzly territory as the punt just sailed out of bounds wide. Tough kick there by number 26, Lee Pollock. Uh, just caught it off the side, took a step to the right, and out it went. Uh, great field position to for to open up the season for Liberty Hill. And Tim, steady diet of this way and that way. Here the, we go. The ball is placed at the Grizzly 44-yard line. Panthers are up to the line quickly. Corley. Hands it off to the left-hand side to Shane Gonzalez. It's going to be a short pickup of about three yards out to the four, up to the 41-yard line. So quick, so disciplined. This whole team right up to the line, fast, ready to go. Took them about four seconds to get that play off. And uh, good job of stopping them after a three-yard, four-yard pickup. Three yards in a cloud of dust, Tim. We're going to see it all night. Well, I... I know this offense will take three yards every down. And the snap comes and they're going to hand out out to Kyle Harrison to the right-hand side. And he picks up a few yards across the 40 down to the 38-yard line. We'll bring up third down and three. There's the first misdirection. Fake, great fake there. And, and off to the right he went. Um, another three yards in a cloud of dust, Tim. And they're off and rolling. A lot of these plays are going to set up bigger plays later on. Third and three, they come up, snap it quickly, hand off to the fullback, I think right up the middle. And, or maybe it got, got bunched, bunched up, up but, but they, they were short. It will bring up fourth down. And, and I actually think the ball got fumbled. It did. It looks like on the fake, the halfback came through and just nipped the ball a little bit. You know this offense is predicated on timing. And right now, it was just a stitch off. And when that happens, Unfortunately, the ball's going to be in the dirt. They're not going to punt, though, Tim. No. This team's going to line up and go for it. No, no, this is not punting. They're at the 38-yard line of the Grizzlies, but they're going to go for it. It's fourth and four. They're up to the line. Searley under center. Harrison's in motion to the right side, and they're going to call a timeout. I, they're going to call a timeout Come over and talk about it a little bit. It is fourth and four as we take this timeout. Uh, you know, and Greg, they're coming in fast and snapping quick. They really are. It's trying to catch them off guard. Glenn doing a good job of playing defense uh, with this fast-paced Liberty Hill offense right now. The miscue on, on third down there, you know, not something that's, that's – uh, Typical uh, of this offense, you usually see it running a little bit cleaner, and you expect that to happen over the course of the game. Um, so, coming back out after this timeout, you know, this is a play where they could try to toss it out wide or run a short passing play. So, they have a couple of options. I really don't see them. Uh, handing off to the fullback up the middle, but we will see. They have a lot of options up their sleeve and in their playbook. And they're coming out. And I'm curious if they're just going straight to the ball or going to go to the huddle. And they're going to a huddle first. And Jacob Searley heads back out there and recalls the play or calls the play for them. They're going to come up to the line. Heading wide out to the left is Connor Kukendall. He's lined up left. Harrison's in motion left-hand side. There's another fumble on the play. Quarterback picks it up, and then they're going to lose the ball and turn it over on downs. And that is the second time they put it on the turf. And a very disappointing uh, opening drive with great field positions for the Panthers, turning it over to the Grizzlies. Well, now the jitters are out. You've had a couple of missteps here to start it out. Uh, hopefully that'll shake the, shake the cobwebs off a little bit. Both Glenn and the Panthers lackluster in their first two offenses' performances, but expect to see that picked up. 
All right, first and 10 for the Grizzlies at their own 38-yard line. McGuire takes a snap, hands off the left-hand side to Thompson, and he gets a few yards, gets across the 40 to maybe, uh, we'll call it the 41-yard line, and it'll bring up second down and seven. Corin Thompson, really the focal point of this offense so far. They've really been faking it to him or handing it to him almost every play so far. Ball's on the left-hand hash. Two wides out to the right, one to the left. McGuire takes the snap, rides it inside, hands off to Morris up the middle, and he gets a couple yards. And that Julian Morris, look, he is a load. He is a really put-together big kid at that running back position. Wyatt Cheney coming up from the safety position and, and giving him a, a good shot. He is a big boy. He takes a lot to get down. Great game tackling by the Panthers. Third down, Lamont Slade comes in for Morris. Man in motion, left hand side, and they're going to quarterback's going to roll out to the right. It's complete out to the right. Enough for a first down. More get across the 40, and in Liberty Hill ter territory, finally brought down at the Liberty Hill 37 yard line. Matthew Montez got the got the tackle there after he broke free. Almost had him in the backfield. Great play by. Great play by Lamont Slade. McGuire again back in the spread offense. Two receivers to the left, two to the right. Slade still in there at running back. Man in motion. They hand off to that man, Thompson. He goes off right tackle, picks up a few yards, gets to the 30-yard line, will bring up second and three. Fourth consecutive first down that they hand it to Corin Thompson on that sweep. They're really building the offense off of that motion, either handing it off to Thompson or faking it and coming the other way. Three wide outs to the left-hand side this time. Ball is at the right-hand hash. One receiver split to the right. Now a roll out to the left-hand side. Throws and completes it out to the wide side for a first down at about the 23-yard line. And he has run out of bounds. Another first down for the Grizzlies. Gang tackle by the Panthers on the right side. Led by Matthew Montez again. Good tackle there. And now that field's getting a little bit shorter. Grizzlies are at the 22-yard line of Liberty Hill. Ball's on the left-hand hash. Two receivers to the left-hand side. One wide out to the right. They have a tight end. Snap and hand off to Thompson again to the right-hand side. And he gets hit. And I think that is Julian Jarvis Henderson that time. Actually, that is Shamir Nichols on the carry. No gain on the play. He did get the ball moved to the middle of the field in between the hashes. There are two receivers to the left and two to the right in this formation. Nate Hatter is the big tight end that's flexed out to the right-hand side. Man in motion again to the right. Now three wideouts to the right. Roll out to the right by McGuire. Throws out and incomplete. The ball intended for... Nate Hatter. Haven't seen a lot of drop back passing from the Glenn Grizzlies so far. So every time that Drew McGuire is, is going back to pass, he is rolling right or rolling left, trying to find something in the flat. Really hasn't gone down the field much, really trying to attack the, the angles uh, of the Liberty Hill defense. Huge play here for both teams. Uh, third down and 10. Balls at the 22-yard line of the Glenn Grizzlies. Ball's on the right-hand side of the field. Three receivers to the left, and there is a penalty against the Grizzlies, and they're going to back it up five yards. Actually, they're motioning up here. I know they're not waving at us, Greg. Great. No, they're no. definitely not. Great job by Corey Schmidt. If this is, it is against the Glenn Grizzlies. Looked like there was a little bit of movement, and as soon as there was, Schmidt jumped, and they had to throw the flag. As soon as that was, they're going to make you make the decision, and it was pretty easy to do. Great job there um, by the senior, Corey Schmidt, number 22. Here we go. We're going to repeat this third down play. Now it's third and 15. It's backed up to the 27-yard line, the Liberty Hill 27-yard line. 2.36 left to go in this first quarter. We are scoreless, so if you're just tuning in, welcome. Greg Ceridi and Tim Dean back in the building again for the first time since 2008. Been a long time. Too long, as yeah, they say. Yeah, 10 years. 
The band's back together again. My, Greg. my goodness. My <laughs> goodness. We're just missing one member of the band. We are. We There's are. Ty Dean, my son, who back when we called was our producer. Um, and also Ty called here with me many times um, several a few years ago. And we called for about three or four years together. And now we thank him for his service. He's out there in the Navy Correct. serving his country. Right. You couldn't be prouder. Right. And I actually am hoping he comes in this fall and we'll have him up in the booth uh, when he's here that week. Can't wait. No, that would be awesome. He, he actually wants to do it. He, he's pretty excited. What is the delay here? I'm not sure. They're, they're it's. I don't know if they... Uh, oh, there's something to do with the clock. And I think that's why they were waving up here to someone in the booth. So here we go. 2.45 left to go into the end of the first quarter. We're going to play football again. Third and 15 from the 27-yard line of Liberty Hill. Drew McGuire in the backfield with Julian Morris right next to him at running back. McGuire's a quarterback, and there's another flag, and that's got to – now the Glenn coach is following the refs out onto the field. There's more flags, and it is, again, another illegal procedure against the Grizzlies. Oh, man, Greg, for the for, for Grizzlies after doing so well and to, to have these last three play opportunities go awry for them. Nothing like it when the offense gives you gifts and backs some stuff up because that's what's happened. Procedure plays. Again, shaking some of the rust off mm -hmm. here. First game of the season. We've seen it on both sides of the ball. Third down now and 20 yards to go. Man in motion left-hand side, putting three receivers on the left. Straight drop back pass. There it is. He's throwing downfield towards the end zone. Nobody in sight. No receiver there. Not even close. And it's going to be fourth down. And I actually think the Grizzlies are just going to go for it here, too. Uh, punting's not going to do any good. If you don't have a kicker uh, that can kick a 50-yard field goal, that's not going to do any good either. So we're probably going to see another passing play. Telling your defenders, no pass interference. Keep them in front of you. Again, we're playing to the 12-yard line here. That's where they got to get to. Good coverage on that last play. Just need to do it one more time. Three receivers out wide to the right, one receiver to the left. McGuire takes the snap. He rolls to the right. He's going to throw back to the left, and it is up in the air, bounced off and still bouncing, and finally incomplete. Oh, my goodness. That, that was a little suspenseful for a second, but it finally fell incomplete and a turnover on downs. There was the... There was the uh, the screen I thought would happen before, but there it is on that play. So long to go. Try to get a little misdirection, but uh, Walker Beatty Jr. blew that right up. That ball was in the air a little long. It was. And, uh, you know, got to knock it down. Good job there knocking it down. Panthers on offense. Here we go. Panthers take over and, and at their own 32-yard line, come right up to the line of scrimmage. Shirley takes a snap and hands it off right up the middle. And he's the fullback still on his feet, gets across the 35 to the 36-yard line, and that is Jacob Schofield on the carry. Schofield not wanting to go down again. Four or five yards on that play alone. Real clean, real fast. This Liberty Hill offense doing what it does, uh, especially after those last couple plays where they put it on the turf. You, you know that they had some words about that. Schofield's a fullback, and we'll call his name quite a bit tonight. And they're in a little bit different formation. And they're going to pitch it out to Harrison to the left-hand side. And there's <laughs> nothing there, but he makes a little bit of something and gains a couple of yards after it looked like he's going to get dropped for a loss. Jacob Schofield with an unbelievable block on the edge to spring him for a couple more yards. Great blocking by the backs. These backs can block him. They don't yep. just run the ball. They no. do a good job of getting out and blocking for each other so, so that you can clear those pass. And what an absolute just haymaker of a block leveled by Schofield. You're not going to play for Coach Walker in this system if, as, a, as a running back if you're not going to block. And it is very important that they all do that. They're up to the line of scrimmage really quick. They're handoff to the left-hand side. And some yards there by Shane Gonzalez. He breaks down the line and down the sideline, finally gets tackled at the 35-yard line after a great gain on the left-hand side. There it is, Tim. Three yards, four yards, five yards, and boom, there's the quick hitter. Catches 30, 30 yards off the left side. Cleared out by the backs again. Great misdirection. Awesome run. 
up the line of scrimmage again. The ball to 38. Inside handoff to Harrison. He gets across, picks up eight, nine yards. Ball's on the turf, and it looks like the Grizzlies may have it. Another fumble by the Panthers. And let's see what they call. It's not been signaled yet. It's The Panthers are going to hang on to it. I, wow. Uh, Grizzly came up with the ball. So. Looked like he was down. Looked like he fumbled okay. it when he landed on his back. So good call there by the ref. Second and two from the 30. Inside handoff again to Harrison. The ball's fumbled again. And this time the Grizzlies have it. Another fumble. Very uncharacteristic for the Panthers. We've seen four fumbles already in these first two drives. And this one ends up in a turnover for the Panthers. Trying to get some extra yards, and that's what happens. People are reaching in and trying to strip that ball. Um, you got to do whatever you can to stop yep. this offense. Yep. And, and that's one of the things that I'm sure the Glenn Grizzly coaches are talking about. You see that ball, get in there, rip it, do something, get them off the field. Yep. And, and so far, it's worked. A little bit of a little bit of rust like we talked about, mm -hmm. and now it's the defense starting to do those things to, to disrupt the offense. Well, the Glenn comes out, now gets the ball on their own 27-yard line. It is only four seconds left. This will be the last play of the first quarter. McGuire's back at quarterback. He takes the snap, takes hands off, looks downfield, under pressure, He's trying to run it up the middle now and does and picks up a couple of yards before he's brought down by a couple of Panther defenders. Well, we're going to say that that's definitely a coverage sack. Even though he got a couple of yards, that's him scrambling forward. And uh, good job there by, by all the Liberty Hill defense led by Brent yep. Ketchum in the middle. And as we end up in the first quarter, it's 0-0. Zero to zero. Greg, can you explain what a coverage sack is? When those defenders on the outside are DBs uh, from Liberty Hill doing a good job of sticking close to their man, eventually those linemen are going to get to the quarterback, and that's exactly what happened there. Good coverage on the outside. Mm -hmm. Nobody open underneath. He did drop straight back that right. time, and so it really allows the defense to keep those guys in front of you. Liberty Hill has been has been uh, susceptible to uh, to Glenn rolling out or to the left or the right and, and having guys open in the flat. At that time, cover set. You know, I, I'm sure you know, we talked about the four fumbles already, and I know the coaches are probably in the ear of the players right now. Uh, we see them already huddled up on the sideline, and I'm sure they're talking about it. Protect the ball. Let's take care of the ball. And and one of the things that's been characteristic over the years of the Panther offense is they have taken care of the ball, and very few times have they fumbled the ball. And uh, uh, and, and so I, it's, I know it's something that they're working on. Harrison is a veteran running back. Uh, and I'm sure that, that he doesn't do that often, but you're right. He was fighting for the extra yards. He had great runs, and it just came out, and I'm sure the Grizzlies were trying to strip the ball as well. The Grizzlies are on out back out. Here we go to start the second quarter, second and eight from the Grizzly 30-yard line, and it's a handoff to the right-hand side to Thompson, and he picks up a few yards and it's going to be a couple yards shy of the first down across the 35-yard line. Steady dive at number five, that fake. Um, and that, that time they gave it to him, he's walking it off. And here comes here comes the big number big number twenty one, Julian Morris into the game. You have a feeling third and short, they're giving it to they're giving it to Morris up the middle here. They still need three yards for the first, but there's two running backs in the backfield. McGuire is still in the shotgun formation. Takes a snap, hands off to Morris right hand side. Greg caught it right. He has the first down a little bit more. Gets across the 45, dropped down at the 47 yard line. A little bit of speed from the big guy there. Oh, yeah. He found a hole and uh, th thought he was just going to have to stick his head down. But great run. Good job uh, by the, the right side of, uh, of, the, of the Glenn Grizzly offensive line to spring that hole open. Biggest hole we've seen all night. Well, we know big boys can run, Greg. Right? <laughs> <laughs> Only when the hole is big enough, right? <laughs> First and 10. Four. First and 10. 46 yard line of the Glen Grizzlies. Takes the snap, hands off right up the middle to Lamont Slade, and no gain on the play. will bring up second and 10. Greg, you could run in your day. The coach, this, it, 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 that day is long ago, Tim. <laughs> <laughs> the, Glenn, the, Glenn, the, Glenn, the Glenn Grizzlies trying to uh, slow it down a little bit. They're mixing in the pass and the run. Now it's mostly now it's mostly run past three, four plays. 
just straight up the middle trying to establish something here and I'd see look, if they can. Yeah, I look for a rollout here based on what they've done in the past. You know, they have two wide outs to the left, one to the right, man in motion right hand side, and actually they're going to hand it off up the middle or there's a fumble and they recover the ball. Well, it looks like it's it, it's contagious, whatever it is. Check the pig skin because it's all over the place. Everybody's putting it on the turf. They can't hang on to it. I don't know. First game jitters yep. have to be out of the way now sure. run, running through the second quarter. This is just good defense, good hard-nosed defense there by the Liberty Hill Panthers. Corey Schmidt up in there to dislodge the ball. Just tuning in. There's no score in this game. 9.50 left to go until halftime. Drew McGuire, the Grizzly quarterback for Glenn, takes the snap, rolls out to the left-hand side. He's going to run it himself, runs up, gets stopped at the line of scrimmage for no gain, and it'll bring up fourth down. Tried to scramble out, but again, these Liberty Hill defensive backs are doing the job in the secondary. Wyatt Cheney, Matthew Montez. They've seen a couple of these plays now, Tim. They've seen that rollout just like we have. Doesn't have too many wrinkles in it, and they seem to have figured it out so far. The last two, three times, and they, they stopped it. Brendan Squires, the punter for Grizzlies, he will punt this one. It's up in the air, and the Panthers just going to get away from it. It bounces at 30, across the 25, and it's going to be down at the 24-yard line, and that's where the Panthers will start this offensive drive. Tim, you can feel like a collective sigh. Is being relieved now. They just stopped them again. Mm -hmm. Here we go. Let's get the offense running. Let's see if they can establish some of those plays that, that, that make them so successful. You have to feel like those, uh, those other plays are behind them now and we, we can start rolling. Panthers come up the line pretty quick to the 24-yard line. Takes a snap. Going to roll out. Greg, he's throwing a pass, and it's complete. Kyle Harrison has the ball across 50, across the 45 at the 40, 35, and finally brought down at the 32-yard line. Greg, Tim, when all else fails, you got to throw the rock. <laughs> Absolute awesome grab by Kyle Harrison. Out, he was wide open. They're not expecting to play there on nope. first down. Nope. They, 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 caught him, they, they caught him unawares, as they say. Jacob Searley with a great rollout pass. First down at the 33-yard on the Grizzlies. Now a handoff. Oh, there's a flag or a whistle. I don't see a flag. Oh, I think a there's a timeout for the Grizzlies. And we're going to take that timeout, too, and catch our breath. You're listening to Panther football on the KMAX Sports Vibe Media Network. At Austin Pets Alive, the mission is to promote and provide the resources, education, and programs needed to eliminate the killing of companion animals. That means more happy pets joining more happy families every single day. In fact, Austin Pets Alive has saved more than 25,000 dogs and cats since 2008. And you can help. Adopt a new family member, help out with a donation, or roll up your sleeves and volunteer. If you have love, time, or money to spare, and we all have at least one of those, you are needed. Visit Austin PetsAlive.com to get started. Austin Pets Alive, helping people help pets. Back here at Panther Stadium, no score in this game, and I'm actually surprised with 8.39 left until halftime that we have a scoreless game. A lot of it is uh, we've had a few fumbles uh, already in this game, and, and you know, that's caused for some little uh, first game jitters. Absolutely, you have, to, you have to put it on. You have to put it on the, on the first game jitters. But Tim, biggest play for Liberty Hill in the first half so far has been a pass play. Right. Yep. Second quarter of a game, and I will tell you that the biggest game for Liberty Hill has been a pass play, and it was a great one at that. First down for the Panthers at the 33-yard line of the Glen Grizzlies. Up the line, quick, surely. Under center, takes the snap, pitches out to Harrison, the right-hand side, gets a good block across the 30, drives his way to the 25-yard line. He picked those last few yards up on his own. On his own, head down, Will tried to get him at least a couple more. Great blocking by the Panthers on the sweep, but you're right, Tim. Kyle wanted a couple more, and he got him when he put his head down there. Harrison with a great move. Ball's going to be spotted at the 26-yard line. They're going to be about three yards short of the first down. Up to the line of scrimmage. Ball's on the right-hand hash. A handoff up to the middle. 
to Jacob Schofield. He gets across the 15, the 10, finally brought down about the four yard line. He busts that open, the fullback Schofield finds himself a crease and makes the Grizzly defense pay. Tim, you go on the outside, you go to the outside, heck, you threw a pass down the middle, now you hit him with a quick hitter with, with the fullback right, right in the middle, nobody is ready for it. There you go for 20 yards right up the gun. First and goal from the five yard line. Ball is spotted right in the middle of the field. Center Jake Lipinski is up, takes this, gives the snap to the quarterback, hands off to the outside, and it is gonna be a Panther touchdown. Canyon. Shane Gonzalez. Oh, Shane off the Gonzalez. Right side, off the right side. Set up beautifully. Blockers out in front. Blocking for each other. There goes those running backs again, Tim. But Gonzalez put his head down, caught the corner, hit the pylon, put six on the board. Matthew Shipley is going to attempt the point after kick. The holder is Drake. Open prowler. And there is a movement by the defense, I think. Oh, it's actually going to go against Liberty Hill. They'll have to back it up. Greg, did you ever kick in a game? Tim, they let me be the holder because that's what wide receivers do. Oh. So I got to I got to be the guy that held the ball yeah. for the kicker. And uh, you know, my, my favorite part was when I got to fake it, right? That's, yeah. what, every, that's what every holder dreams <laughs> right. of. Here's the point after attempt. Snap is back. Holds down. The kick is up. And it is good. And with 7.42 left to go until halftime, the Liberty Hill Panthers lead 7 to nothing. And we'll take a quick break and be right back. You're listening to the Panther Football, Panther Football on the KMAX Sports Bike Media Network. We're glad you enjoy the KMAC Sports Broadcast. But did you know that you can purchase a copy of this or any KMAC broadcast for personal use? Whether you're making a highlight video or just want to be able to enjoy this game years in the future, send us a note to info at kmacsports.com. That's I-N-F-O at kmacsports.com. Let us know which games you're interested in and we'll set it up. For a small fee, we can even do some editing for you. And the great thing, any purchase will send a portion of the proceeds to your school. Enjoy the game now and keep it forever. Or just any broadcast for personal use. Hit us up. Info at KMAXports.com. Bringing your teams and your highlights to you. We are KMAX Sports. Back here at Panther Stadium. 7.32 left to go until halftime. The Panthers have gotten on the board and lead 7 to nothing. I'd be remiss, Tim, if I didn't say Drake Overprillion, Junior, Holder. Yep. Give him the point. Unbelievable catch no, no. by Overpriller to, to put that ball down. It was a little high snap, and he was able to put it down for the extra point. The kickoff is kicked into the end zone, brought back, fumbled, and then brought back out of the end zone. That is brought out by Sam Martin, and he gets across the 10 to the 13-yard line. He fumbled it on the two, and then it went into the end zone. <laughs> he had to bring it back out. He had, <laughs> he had no choice. Good coverage there by Liberty Hill. There's, a, there's some uh, some yellow laundry on the field, Tim. It is a yellow flag. I was watching Canadian football. Their flags are orange. I don't know if you noticed that. They have a different color penalty flag for Canadian Canadian football. football. I did not know yeah, that. I didn't know either until I watched Johnny Manziel play in the Canadian Football League. And, go, and, and thought it was odd that there's an orange one. It looked like it was an illegal block in the back against the Grizzlies. And that's going to back them up even more. As they were trying to scramble with that ball bouncing on the two-yard line after it was fumbled. Uh, kind of tough for those blockers to get in position as the ball gets up from that. You know, it almost looks like the referee crew is having first game jitters, too. <laughs> <laughs> you know. He's trying to get their feet underneath I them. I know. That the right call. It is just, there. it's a lot of delay. It, and I know we don't have instant replay, right? So it's not that. No. <laughs> they can't check with the VAR. No. It's it's a little odd. That they, they, I know they're trying to get it right, but it seems a little odd that, uh, a lot of the delays in this game has been the referee crew uh, trying to sort some things out. So it's their first game of the season as well. And after the penalty is marked off, 
It is just backed up to the Grizzly six yard line. And Drew McGuire is standing, going to take this snap right about the end zone. Two receivers to the right, one to the left. The tight end is set on the right hand side. Straight drop back in the end zone, throws it across the middle, and there's a flag. That is definitely holding by the defensive back. He reached out, looks like he got him by the jersey. I would say it's definitely no. holding. No, looked like he had great position on him, Mike. I might, you know, you got, I might, might let him play a little bit there. Brady Brewer, I thought, had really good coverage there on the inside. That ball, clearly uncatchable, but they gave it to him, Tim. They do have a different angle than we do. Let's give the referee that credit. Is that it's a little bit different angle, and it, neither one of us probably could see that very well. You can't so. touch him. You can't touch him, especially when the ball is in the air. But it's gonna be it's holding. Looked like he had some pretty good coverage. Yep. Yeah. And, yeah. and, and it's going to be a mark off of 10 yards, and now it puts the ball across the 15 to the 16 yard line. First down. Drew McGuire in the shotgun formation, man in motion. They're going to hand off to that man. That is. Warren Thompson again, trying to get out to the outside. He's going to be brought down at the original line of scrimmage for no game. Tim, I think that was Roderick Stubberfield, the junior, in. haven't seen Thompson on the field for a while since that last play. He's not out there now. Stubberfield tried to catch the edge, but again, the right side of that Panther defense. Led by, there he is, Drake Oberfiller, the guy with the hands. Second down and 10 from the 16 yard line. Three receivers out wide to the right, one to the left hand side. Roll out to the right hand side by McGuire after taking the snap, throws it downfield complete for a short gain of Nate Hatter across the 20 to the 22 yard line. And then Wyatt Cheney has been all over the field, brought the wood, and took down big Nate Hatter. He's not a small guy. No. Cheney just knocked him right out of bounds. Great tackle in the open field by Cheney. Hatter is 6'2", 220 pounds. Third down play, third and four. Three wide outs to the left-hand side, one to the right. Morris is offset to the left, and he's going to roll out to the left-hand side, looking for a receiver, throws it, and it's complete to Thompson for a first down across the 40 to the 42 yard line. There's Thompson, he's back in the game now. Good to see him up and running. He's good, good catch there. They did a fade, quarterback rolled out to the right, the fade like he was gonna do that. Out, and then, uh, they flooded the left side of the field. Now the ball's on the left hand hash at the 42 yard line of the Grizzlies, getting close to midfield. Two receivers to the left, one to the right, tight end off on the right hand side and it's a handoff to the right hand side still his feet brought down for a loss on the carry that was Shamir Nichols Wyatt Cheney shooting the gap again he is all over the field Tim right now the defensive MVP for this Liberty Hill Panther team he is just making tackle after tackle pursuing doing a great job from his safety position and the way that he's playing he, he's like a deep linebacker Tim he's going sideline to sideline and just putting his hat on everybody. Second and 12, man in motion. That is Nichols going in motion to the right-hand side. Morris is offset to the left. McGuire, quarterback, takes a snap, fakes hands off, rolls out to the right, complete to Hatter, and he gets dropped down for a short loss of four yards. Who got him, Tim? I don't know who that is. That's number 24, Wyatt Cheney with another tackle out in the open field. Cheney adjusts the defense as, as they're going in motion. Um, it seems like McGuire safety. McGuire, <laughs> McGuire is, is is moving people in motion. Liberty Hill making the adjustments. It looks like Wyatt's calling it out. I can't really see, mm -hmm. but they are making adjustments as those shifts happen. Third down and eight. Three receivers to the left, one to the right. Roll out to the left, looking downfield. Throws it. It is complete to Sam Martin. Enough for a first down across the 50 to the Liberty Hill 44-yard line. That's the play that's getting them right now, Tim. That's the play that this Liberty Hill, this Liberty Hill pin the defense can't cover. They're flooding the side of the field. They're putting one long, one short, and then running one out to it. So you got three guys on that side of the zone. Pick your poison. Right now, McGuire doing a good job of finding the open man. He is, because that's the key. You got to throw an accurate pass, and, and they got to catch the ball, and he's doing that right now. First and 10 from the 44, and it is a sort of a reverse to the right-hand side, and Thompson has it 
to the right, but the Liberty Oak Panthers run it down for only a short gain of about two yards. You're not going to get by Wyatt Cheney on that one because he is sideline to sideline again. Great pursuit. Stopping the ball. Cheney with his hands on his hips yes. as he's walking back to his safety position. He's got to be sucking wind because he is just doing what he needs to for this team. Second down and six. The Grizzlies need to get to the Liberty Hill 34-yard line. The ball sits at the 40. Right-hand hash. There are one receiver to the right, one to the left. There are two running backs in the backfield with quarterback Drew McGuire. And there's movement, and it's going to be a penalty against the Grizzlies. They're going to back it up five yards. That is a break for the Panthers. Also gives them a chance to, you know, they're doing a lot of running sideline to sideline. Gives them a chance to get a little bit of breather here. But let's say the Glenn Grizzlies here, led by led by Drew McGuire, great offensive series right now, mixing the run with a little bit of the pass. They started at their own six-yard line. This is by far their best offensive series of the game. Three minutes and 45 seconds left to go until halftime. The Panthers lead seven to nothing. The Grizzlies are trying to move the ball downfield and get in scoring position. It is second and 11. One receiver to the right. Thompson in motion. They hand the ball in the motion. Right out the middle. Gets it across the 40, the 30, the 20. Still on his feet at the 5. And he is going to score as he's tackled into the end zone. And Liberty Hill has played great defense the whole game and give up a run right up the middle on a motion play as Thompson was in motion. Warren Thompson, really the, the, the spark on this offense. They give it to him in motion. They've been finding him in the seams. Right then to slow developing play. The blockers had some time to make it happen. Thompson made him pay up the middle. Pedro Soto is the kicker for the Grizzlies. He gets his ball up and it is good. And we have ourselves a tie ball game with three minutes and 24 seconds left until halftime. This game is tied at seven. Well, we got a football game, Tim. Three minutes, 24 seconds before the second half starts. And this, three minutes, 24 seconds, Tim, a lot of time for this Liberty Hill team to go right back down the field and do what they do. Um, great answer, though, by the Grizzlies, and especially Corin Thompson has been. You know, the, the, the Panther defense didn't play poorly. You know, there was a breakdown right there and right at the middle. Matter of fact, that they haven't been cutting back to the inside like that. He's been a lot of times he's been going to the outside. And when he took the handoff from from, from McGuire in motion, that he just immediately took immediate uh, left and went right inside to the gut of the Panther defense, and he found a seam and was able to make it to the end zone. Once he was able to start picking them up and putting them down, uh, he's got some good speed and got some good separation there. Ball is being teed up. It's going to be kicked off by Arton in a host and back deep for the Panthers, standing at about the 10 yard line. Kyle Harrison catches it, runs right to the middle, across the 20, 25, 30, 40, 50. Nobody's going to catch him. 30, 20, 10, and run back for a touchdown by Kyle Harrison to put the Panthers back on top. That's how you answer, Tim. That's what you do. You say a tight ball game, not for long. Right up the middle. Great blocking by this special team. That kick was a little short, Tim. Nope. They made him pay. And, and how does the short kick affect the run back? Just not going to let your defenders get in engaged with their with, mm -hmm. with the guys that they need to. Right. The blockers have the advantage. That that kick is going to be short. That guy's getting a full head of steam uh, before the, the Grizzlies get a chance to, to fill the lanes. Snaps back. Shipley's kick is up. And it is good. And with 313 left now until halftime, Liberty Hill bounces back from giving up that touchdown and now lead the Glen Grizzlies 14 to 7. And we're going to take a quick break and we'll be right back. You're listening to Panther Football on the KMAX Sports Bike Media Network. 
socialize with us. Yeah, man, I tell you what, that dang old internet, man, you throw it on there, point and click, 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 it's real easy. Man. On Twitter, at KMAX Sports, or catch us on Facebook, search KMAX Sports. Just another way, KMAX Sports is bringing your team to you. We're back here at Panther Stadium, a great night for football. Greg, it is fantastic to have you back in the booth with me, and I've been off for two years, and it feels good. Tim, I'm going to say the exact same thing. It's been over a decade since we've done this, mm -hmm. and man, I'm just so glad to be here. Full stadium tonight. The bands are coming out in the field. Friday night football, Tim, in Texas. You can't beat it. Unless you're in Pennsylvania. And, and Just kidding, Tim. Just Greg, kidding. this stadium is packed. You know, if you, this is a, yeah, it's, this stadium is packed. Liberty Hill has filled up their entire stands on this side, and there's people along the fence line, uh, down along the fence, all along the front of the field. Uh, this place is, is rocking. The Glenn Grizzlies traveled well as well, Tim. Lots of fans on the other side. Kickoff from the 40 is deep, and the Panthers want to make sure they keep him in front and not give up a, a big gain themselves. Get caught and hit at about the 15-yard line and drug down. Great coverage by the Panthers. Trey Seward, sophomore on the kickoff team, earned the stripes to him getting the big tackle in the open field. Trey Seward. Nothing like getting a tackle when you're a sophomore, Tim. That's true. That is you, your first, first big league game right here. Uh, three minutes and seven seconds to go until halftime. The Grizzlies, you know, can put it up in the air, and I'm sure that we may see that. They have three minutes left. They have time to get down, and they've proven they can strike. The Grizzlies come onto the field, and they're going to go three wide to the left-hand side. This is, the, I think, maybe one of the first times I've seen no receivers to the opposite side. McGuire is going to be a man in motion to the right. McGuire hands it off to the right-hand side. And not much gaining there. Hand off to Shamir Nichols. Tried to set the edge. Brady Brewer came up from his defensive back spot there. when they, Like you said, didn't have anybody split out wide. Brewer got to come in. Stuck his nose in there and, and, and kept it inside. Good tackle. Pick up a four. Uh, it will be second and six. The clock is ticking. It's now two minutes and 40 seconds left and running. Three wide outs to the left-hand side. We'll probably will see one of them come in motion. We don't, and they're going to roll out the left. They're going to flood this side, throw it short to nickel, complete to the 30-yard line. Enough for a first down, enough to move the chains. The clock will stop momentarily while they reset the chain. Matthew Montez, tackle low. Again, that flood, Tim. They've got three receivers on the right-hand side. They send one on a curl. They send one on an out, and they put one deep. They're just doing that on this side of the field, and, and no matter how well you defend it, it feels like someone's always going to be open. Here we do the same thing opposite side now, three to the right. He's got that tight end on this left-hand side. Straight drop back. Throwing deep, looking for a receiver, and he's not there. Uh, the receiver and the defensive back get tangled up, and that might have helped, but an incomplete pass, it will bring up third down. Senior Trenton Seward on the coverage. Tim, 155, yeah. third down and, 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 and 10 to go. You can get the ball back here. It's actually second down. I missed that up. Uh, uh, we're getting our kinks out too, right? <laughs> So, Not you, rust 10 years for you, it's been a couple for me, so we're getting our kinks out as well. well Us, the refs. I call games at home. The wife gets mad if oh, I'm yeah. just yelling at the TV, right. but, you know. <laughs> it is second down and 10 from the 30-yard line, the Grizzly 30-yard line. Roll out to the right-hand side from McGuire, looking down in. He gets hit as he throws, completes to Hatter, and short of the first down by a couple of yards. Corey Jellison senior linebacker absolutely destroyed that play on that rollout just took out the whole left side of the line he knocked two guys down great job of sticking your nose in there and doing what you have to do to collapse that blocking brings up third and about three yards to go two receivers split out to the right and to the left McGuire takes the snap, looks immediately to the right, throws and completes it, and it is a first down across the 40. Complete. He breaks the tackle across the 50, the 40. Finally brought down out of bounds at about the Liberty Hill 33-yard line. 
Missed tackles, Tim. That's going to spring them for an extra 30 yards. When you don't wrap them up, that, that's what happens. They're great individual play. Uh, great individual play there by Jarvis Henderson. Well, Liberty Hill did able to tackle him inbounds, and the clock continues to run. It's 135 left until halftime. The ball is on the Liberty Hill 33-yard line. McGuire stepped back, three receivers to the left. He rolls out to his left, throws it down, incomplete pass. He had a receiver open, and that is the first time we've seen him miss on that play. Well, that luckily, he didn't throw it long because Corin Thompson blew the lid off of that. Uh, they ran the, the curl out, they ran the, the, the out, they ran the curl in the middle. Corin Thompson went down the sideline, looked like a flag route. Um, Fade rather, and he was wide. Second down and 10. There's a minute and 27 seconds left. Balls at the Liberty Hill 33 yard line. Three receivers out wide to the left. No receivers to the right. Morris, the running back, offset to the right. Straight drop back by McGuire. He's under pressure. Rolls out to the left. Throws it downfield. It's intercepted at the 10. Now to the 15, the 20, the 25, the 30, 35. Finally knocked out of bounds. It's about the 37 yard line. A great play. Intercepted, I believe that was Trenton Seward. Senior Trenton Seward playing center field. That ball was just up there for no. the take, and Tim, nobody around it, not anybody anywhere near him. Great pressure by this Liberty Hill defense to force the turnover, and great job with that defensive back of Trenton Seward. Way to finish the job there with that ball being up in the air. Liberty Hill with not a lot of time on the clock, but can pick up yards in bunches as we have seen in the past. We've already seen that tonight. You have to wonder if the defense, knowing that there's a little time, if they're gonna if they're gonna try to get back or try to try to give them some space. Remember he'll take 12, 14 yards every There time. are two wide outs to the left hand side. Searley takes a snap, hands off inside, nothing doing there. It is no gain. So they're gonna get back up the line as quick as they can to get another play. Clock is ticking at 105, 104 now. They lost the yard. The ball is on the Liberty Hill 36 yard line. Play comes in. Brought in by Connor Kukendall. They're up to the line of scrimmage really fast. Going to handoff or roll out. Quarterback throws it downfield, has a receiver, and it is incomplete. They had a receiver behind the defensive backs and was unable to connect. Cole McWilliams Sr. open down the side. The ball was up in the air. Just missed it, Tim. It was a good pass. I mean, it, was, it wasn't, I mean, it was up in the air, had a lot of hang time, but it was there. The receiver uh, definitely had a good shot at catching it. So it's third down, third and 11. Now 42 seconds left on the clock, and and if you're Glenn, you know that Liberty Hill is going to try to do something here. Uh, your your defensive backs probably take a step back a little bit further, trying to keep the ball in front of them. Ball's on the right hand hash. They're up very quick, and it is going to be a pass play. Straight drop back, throw across the middle. There is a receiver open, and it is dropped. About that the 35-yard line. That one a little under yeah, throw, but yeah. still, still open, still open. Still feel like you can make it. If he makes a catch, it's a no, great catch. It was. It was he a makes the catch. Ball. Unbelievable catch. Yeah. Yeah. That ball just a little under thrown there. But, but Tim, this Liberty Hill Panther team throwing the ball in the first half. This I absolutely love it. More passes than you've probably seen in a game oh. ever that you've ever called, right? <laughs> right. So it's fourth down and 36 seconds. The Panthers are going to have to punt this away, and that could be dangerous in itself. With 36 seconds, you uh, don't want them to have a good return. The snap's back. The punt is away. It's actually a pretty nice punt. Have to call the receiver to go back. He receives, catches it, gets across the 35 to 40, has some room. Tackled about midfield, gets across midfield. And they're going to spot it about the 48-yard line. Great overfriller on the coverage there, on, on, the, on the tackle. Good job. Uh, uh, when he busted up the middle, the tackle great four. Not great overfriller. Well, 24, 24 seconds. Down Grizzlies. The Grizzlies aren't going to give up here either. They just got the ball into their own territory. Two timeouts. And yet, and are they using one here? No, they're. And the Panthers are trying to 
keep them from getting in the end zone to keep the momentum back on their side. Out come the Grizzlies in their formation. They have one, two wide outs to the right hand side. The ball is at the Liberty Hill 48 yard line, and there's also two wide outs to the left hand side. One, Morris is the running back. Man in motion to the right hand side is Thompson. They hand off to Thompson. Thompson going to throw the ball downfield, and it too is going to be intercepted. And he's trying to hang on the ball. Brought down about the 21 yard line. That is what? Cheney on the interception. He deserves to get a turnover, Tim. Nope. Great job. Four times in the back of the quarterback from the Grizzlies, so you know he can throw it. Right. It's on the depth chart that he is the backup. I'm sure the Delivery Hill coaches told him that was a possibility. They weren't fooled. Nobody went anywhere. These defensive backs for Liberty Hill doing a great job under pressure uh, quite a bit. With another turnover, uh, picking it out of the air. 22 seconds left. Liberty Hill leading 14 to 7. The ball is on the Liberty Hill 21 yard line. This is where you don't take chances, and we sh should see a couple of run plays, if not just one, right here by the Panthers. And a handoff right up the middle to the halfback. Gain of a couple of yards, and that will probably do it. And no, they're not going to. Well, they run pretty quick. They do get a playoff, and then another running play. Dance around the backfield, gets tackled for a loss of about two, and that's going to do it. Uh, Greg for halftime and the Panthers are going to go in with the lead 14 to 7 over the Glen Grizzlies and Greg good fun half of play it was a little sloppy in some places uh, you might expect that on week one uh, saw a lot of new things out of the Panther offense that you and I haven't seen um, what's your impression again get the first half jitters out of the way you made some mistakes uh, like to see Liberty Hill settle in after they made a couple of those quick hitter mistakes. Mm -hmm. Hadn't seen anything like that since those two back-to-back mm -hmm. uh, -back turnovers that they had there. And now they, they seem to be clicking. Uh, great football game, Tim, here to, to start the season. It is, and in defensively, uh, I know you were impressed uh, with some of the Panthers on defense. I mean, Wyatt Cheney, to me, is having a ball game, as they say. These defensive backs for Liberty Hill, uh, Brady Brewer, over, over Pillar. Yeah, he's kind of he, he is playing the linebacker, but he's been out there making some he's been out there making some good tackles. Trenton Seward, Wyatt Cheney, these guys are are doing a great job on defense with this. Basically, almost every play is going to be a pass play unless it's a sweep. Then they got to come up and make the tackle. So they're really under pressure. Uh, this these defensive backs from Liberty Hill, and so far. Holding this team to seven points, you got to figure that that's, that's an accomplishment. So going into ha the, the locker room for the Panthers, what are you? What do you believe? What, what might be some of the focus of adjustments for both the offense and the defense? If I'm the Liberty Hill coaching staff right now, great job, guys. You're doing a good job tackling. You're doing a good job sideline to sideline. We had one play against. us. We had one play up the middle. That was a real slow developing play. Good job blocking from, from the Grizzlies. But other than that, I really feel like these defensive backs and this defense for Liberty Hill has stepped up to the challenge. They've been flooding the side of the field, the right side and left side, the wire with a couple, one short, one mid, one long. And he's been doing a good job of picking out which one it is. I said before, it was Sewell, Brewer, Montez, Chaney, under pressure all game. And you have to figure out what's going to be the same in the second half. The Grizzly defense, Tim, I might have to say the same thing. Right. 14 points against this Liberty Hill offense, not bad, and one was a kickoff. Right. So, Defense to defense, it's seven to seven, and then kind of at a stalemate. Right. Special teams cost them the lead. Right. Liberty Hill gets the ball back too. This thing can be, you know, twenty-one-seven in a heartbeat. Tonight, and, uh, the Guardians will be performing. That, that's the, the one thing probably you're going to talk to. Hey, we got to come out and play ball here. We're going to be two scores behind. One of the things I've noticed, and we talked about a little bit of the passing plays that we saw. Every receiver that they targeted was open, wide open, and and I am. Uh, 
curious to see if we might see some of that in the second half. The coaches noticing, you know what? Of all this running, every one of our receivers in, in, in our routes that we have targeted were open. And, and all we did was throw a couple of incomplete passes. And that's open for them. And I'm not saying they're going to come out and throw the ball because that's not what's going to happen. But they did throw it at uh, the, the, the two passes they missed, the Grizzlies knew it were coming. But they still were open. And so there's some good routes being run by the receivers for Liberty Hill. And then the one that was really successful was the one uh, the start the uh, uh, the first down play. Uh, pass play on first down uh, on with Panthers. I don't think first down pass for Panthers has ever come out of my mouth <laughs> I don't, before. I'm just not sure. It's, 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 definitely, <laughs> it's definitely a rarity. you got to give all the credit to Jacob Searley, who has been – running this offense very well in the first half. And like you said, the fact that he's had three or four opportunities to pass and every time they've called his number, he's put the ball close. Right. That's really all you can do as a quarterback is give your guy a chance and he's clearly done that. So no, you know, hopefully look for the coaches to, to give him some more opportunities because you see he can step up to the plate and make it happen. I agree. And we're going to take a quick break here. Liberty Hill leads at 14-7. to When we come back, uh, I had a conversation with Coach Jeff Walker uh, prior to tonight's game in preparation uh, for the season, and we're going to come back with this interview when we take a quick break. You're listening to Panthers Football on the KMAX Sports Fight Media Network. The KMAX Sports Camp was so hot this summer, we're going to offer it again this coming December. That's right, three KMAX Sports Campers not only learned about sports broadcasting, but they're getting it done on the KMAX Sports Network as you hear this. You want your young one to learn, get hands-on experience, and possibly get involved? Middle schoolers, high schoolers, and adults are welcome. We'll hold three sessions in December, including two over Christmas break. Call us for more information at 512-338-1111, extension 100. That's 512-338-1111, extension 100. The KMAX sports staff with over 100 years of combined broadcast experience will give each camper personalized guidance on getting into and advancing a career in sports broadcasting. Campers will be provided water, camp t-shirt, and a sample of their work. And just like high school sophomores Chase Andrews, Blake Herrera, and E.J. Sanchez, the best campers may get an opportunity to enter and possibly work with KMAX Sports. Call us for information, 512-338-1111, extension 100, or email us info at kmaxsports.com. KMAX Sports Camp, the best way to get in the game. We are here in pregame interview for tonight's ball game. Uh, Liberty Hill kicking off the 2018 football season. I'm sitting down with head coach uh, Jeff Walker of the Panthers. Talk a little bit of football before tonight's ball game. And coach, uh, you've gotten through two scrimmages plus uh, an inter-squad scrimmage. You know, what have the scrimmages done for you to help prepare you going into the season? Uh, you know, hopefully they got us in shape a little bit. Um, but the biggest thing our scrimmages do, because we don't hit live very much in practice because I uh, don't want to lose players in practice, so we do a lot of what we call FUD, you know, not wrapping them up, running them around, and doing some of those things. So uh, really those two scrimmages are the only two times we really have gone live this year. So um, it, it helps us kind of see where we're at when we start moving a little faster and have somebody, you know, in front of us that's um, not holding a dummy or something, you know. So um, it, it's good. When we can go live against somebody else, obviously it helps us get the timing and just see what our kids can do, you know, one-on-one -on -one with some individual matchups and those kind of things. So um, it, it's it's very important. I wish we had more, but, uh, you know, I'm just not willing to get anybody hurt in practice. So uh, we, we really use practice to just go, go fast and, uh, and uh, get better at our techniques and stuff. But, you know, those scrimmages, we really put a lot into, you know, um, Stay low and doing those things because it's really our only live action heading into these, this game. So we, we typically get better after every football game because we get more live action going on, right. you know. So, um, you know, I guess the live action is what we get most out of it. Okay. Uh, tonight is senior night, which is, um, it's a little odd to have it at the first game of the season, but um, tell me how that is a pro or a con uh, in your schedule heading into the into into the game well uh, you can always find all kinds of pros and cons with pretty much everything we do but uh you know pro i think we get it done we get to you know we get to 
uh, show off our seniors and you know meet the parents and you know and uh, give them some recognition. We have 31 of them you know this year, so we have a big senior class. Um, so you know we get to recognize those guys for all their hard work over the years in Liberty Hill and uh, what they do for this program. Uh, two, obviously the, <laughs> the con here it would be you know it's early in the year and there's a lot of things going on. You just put one more on the top of it, but uh, you know I, I, I think uh, pulls out where the cons just because of uh, we get it done and we can start focusing on our year and, and, and district and all that kind of stuff and it's not a distraction. Um, you know we can get in our routine so. But uh, we're excited to honor these these young men because they've, they've put in six hard years of uh, Little Eagle football, and uh, they, they deserve all the recognition we can give them. Um, you know, I, uh, I know that you have uh, two coaches on your staff that actually have a ring from Liberty Hill. And something that I'm curious to know is uh, uh, how have Brandon Terry and Jordan Johns uh, being graduates of this program and being part of two state championship teams, how have they helped uh, continue to develop the culture here at Liberty Hill just because they've been here? Have they used their influence and their experience any with the kids? You know, that, that's funny you say that because they, they you know, I say it all the time, you know, and I bring them up all the time in, in those years, but we don't talk a lot about the past. I'm, I'm one of those guys that we focus so much on today and taking care of this, you know, this Friday night that we don't look back much, but there are there are times we bring them up and, and talk about what their, you know, their class, because they've experienced. They've, they've gone through the, you know, what we do, the grind and all that stuff, and we haven't changed a lot. We still do what we do, and, you know, and so they're, they're good ones, I think, to, the kids bounce things off of them, questions off of them, stuff like that. Uh, you know, they're not real vocal guys, and they never have been. They weren't when they were real players, and they're not when they're coaches. They're good, uh, you know, some people call player coaches. You know, the kids like them, mm -hmm. and they're good coaches. They know the game and all that stuff, but they're not loud screamers or anything like that. You know, they're pretty, they got a good head on their shoulders. But uh, I think we do use them because they've been, in, they've, they've been there and they've had success. Mm -hmm. And so, it, you know, we do, we do talk about it, but uh, our kids know that I'm so, that that's so long ago. That um, it's it's kind of lost its luster. We need we need to get another one. You know? <laughs> right. so our focus is trying to do it again, and that's that's a big push. We, we're not looking back much yeah. here. Well, that's good. You always got looking forward. Um, you know, you're playing, um, kicking off the season with Glenn, which is a brand new school and and not even full of seniors yet. If I'm if I'm correct, they're full. They're full. Yeah, they're full. They're okay, full. So uh, how? Is it hard because it is a new school to do the, are, are the kids, I mean, how do you look at, keep them from looking past them and keep them looking at it because it's just one game at a time? hundred percent. I, I can tell you right now, we had a practice a couple of weeks ago and I looked it over to uh, one of our coaches. I said, we're going to get beat by three touchdowns if we don't make some changes now because uh, Glenn is well coached. I, I tell people all the time, I, I don't give other coaches props, my peers props very often because I think the coaching profession isn't what it used to be, really. But uh, Glenn has him a really good football coach. He, he, he teaches toughness like we do. And so we, I know it's going to be a very tough physical football game. And they have skilled kids like we won't see in district mm -hmm. all over the field. You know, uh, we didn't show up. It wasn't because we overlooked them. I, I can tell you right now, if we don't come out of the locker room ready to play, uh, it, it, it's it's going to be a rough, long night because it's a, it's a scary good program coming at us. Well, I've been around Liberty Hill football for a long time, and I know and almost every night the, the Panthers come out ready to play, and I know that's your goal, and, and uh, be able to take on a, a, each and every Friday night challenge. I've seen them take on um, Goliaths and, and do really well. I, I, I do think it's something to be said about sometimes the character of Liberty Hill football players, and I know you've seen it over the years as well. Yeah, no doubt, and and, and uh, I, I just got chills because we still have those kids. Mm -hmm. We still have those kids. Uh, and I, I always say not enough of them, but we right. do. You know, and, um, in our in our locker room, they're still, and I, it's more than a handful, but uh, there, there's still a lot of kids that are that are you know were here in school when we were winning them, you know, and went to those games and right. saw them and. And they still they bleed purple, boy, and they, they don't want to let coaches down, and they play hard, and they're going to leave it on the field. And, and uh, you know, they're, they're pleasers. You know, they're just great kids that went on and off the, on and off the field. 
you know, and um, so we still have a lot of them like that. You know, they're they're they're, they're tough kids, and uh, I don't think it'll be y'all be disappointed. I, I I tell the kids all the time, I just hope we're worth the price of admission. Right. And I think, and I do think this group's going to be that way. Uh, you know, I, I hope this Friday night, but but if not this Friday night, you keep following this football team, and if we can stay healthy, I promise you, y'all, there's going to teams going to come out of the locker room that this town can be proud of because they're they're good young men that are going to play the game the way it's meant to be played. Well, Coach, I'm really excited about seeing them, and thank you for your time, and good luck tonight. Thanks. Thanks for having me. Welcome back to Welcome back to Panther Stadium. And we are here at halftime. 14-7 uh, is the lead for a Liberty Hill. And, that's, and you want to talk about something, Greg, uh, after – listen to coach walker um i want to tell all our listeners right now you might not be aware of this but right now uh we're kmac sports is only scheduled to broadcast five more panther football games this season uh after tonight if you'd like to step up and help fund the other three games so the parents and the grandparents and the relatives and panther fans everywhere can catch those games on kmac sports uh, if you're interested, please contact Chuck Okada at chuck at kmaxsports.com or call Chuck at 512-466-7751. As you know, KMAX Sports has been broadcasting Panther Athletics since 2007, and we broadcast 888 Panther games, matches, and events coming into tonight. There's three tonight that are already being broadcast, so that's going to put it over 890. We'd love to bring Liberty Hill football to all Panther fans across the world this season. If you'd like to help us, contact Chuck at chuck at kmaxsports.com. And Greg, on that note, 2007 was the, the, the first year, and that's the year that you and I called the state championship game. And as Greg, as we went through that journey of that season, we had a listener from the Philippines, if you remember correctly. And, and so every Friday night, uh, uh, Carter Ware, uh, it was the Ware family, and they listened to us every single Friday night and gave us a shout out every single Friday night that they were listening to our games. It has really been a joy to bring the games, KMAX Sports bringing the games to you. And uh, I know when Coach Vance was the coach here, he had relatives listening to the games. Uh, and, and, and it is a very, very great service uh, for people all over to listen to the game. Right now, all the kids that are playing tonight have someone that they know that that lives somewhere else that lives, wants to listen to the game or listen to the game. And it has been a really good joy. So we don't want to miss those three games this year. So if you know of any other businesses in the community or if you own a business, you might be able to step up and Help us get these other three games on the air this season uh, so we can get the games out to all the, the, the Panther fans. Don't hesitate to call Chuck, and I'm going to give you that number again. That's 512-466-7751. 512-466-7751. And give you Chuck a call. Uh, I know he loves you. Can you talk about you know,
and, and every single football game since the beginning of the 2007 football season has been broadcast live and 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 don't want to miss out on these three games this year so if you could help or know someone to help let us know and I, it's about 145 consecutive football games over how the many, 10 years how many it, a lot of a lot of <laughs> and in that time period only one losing season and, and uh um, and it's been a winning season when they made the playoffs every year, but one of those seasons. And and uh, so, I, hey, Greg, I, I expect us to be calling again in the playoffs. This, this is a very good Liberty Hill team. Uh, they are predicted to uh, uh, win district and, and do well. I even think the Grizzlies, I've heard uh, Coach Walker talking about the Grizzlies on the other side are, are, are a playoff contender in their first season of – district varsity competition. I, I don't see anything taken taken away from that state. Right. You know, watching this team play uh, offense with uh, a lot of good skilled players. Mm-hmm. They move the ball around and have a good quarterback, which is what you need if you have somebody that can look at right ball. Thompson, great athlete, can play multiple positions. We've seen him throw the ball and see the ball and catch the ball and go in. Yeah, I, you know, that the, 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 the tight end, uh, Nate Hatter, is a is a really good athlete. I'm surprised they haven't targeted him a little bit more in the passing game. Uh, you know, he is a he's a big haul. He's a good kid. He's a um, he's been open a few times, and you know they're making some adjustments too. We talked about Liberty Hills adjustments and and uh, the Glen Grizzlies. That's what coaching staff do. Really good ones do. They take them into halftime. They make a few adjustments uh, to their to their game plan uh, and what they're going to do. And I I do think we're going to see a lot more of that rollout passing. Uh, passing plays from Glenn that was very successful. Until that last drive, we saw um, uh, Drew McGuire miss on his first couple of passes on that same drive, um, and that was the first time I saw him miss any passes. It wasn't because of pressure. No. It wasn't because of something that Please direct your attention to the and that's going to slow it down. 35 yard line. The Panther Pitcher is about to congratulate the Robotic Club for winning this week's Tailgate Contest. The Panther Pitcher is a local nonprofit organization that raises money for Liberty Hill Beach and School of Tilly. At every home game, every home varsity football game, the Panther Pitcher is hosting a community tailgate. They will be giving away a total of $10,000 in prize money to junior and senior high school organizations throughout the season. You know, we, we didn't see a lot of, uh, as opposed to in the past, um, from Liberty Hill. We weren't seeing a big load of fullback run. Um, and, and uh, you know, that, that, I find that a little curious. And, uh, but there, we did see a lot of more diversity. In replace of those, we saw some passing plays that were inserted in that game plan. And, and uh, so they were very hard to predict what they were going to run. And matter of fact, the one of the fifty back running plays drop the middle gained some really good yards. Tonight is three hundred and forty six dollars. The winning ticket is zero four six zero nine two seven. Once again the fifty fifty drawing for three hundred and forty six dollars. The winning ticket is zero four six zero nine seven two Please go down to the uh, apartment to get to the table, the 50-50 table by the front gate. Thank you. Now let's just go back to, you talk about that, but also the first two drives for Liberty Hill ended with some miscues of handling the football. Uh, cost them the yardage and it cost them the, the downs. And, and so uh, the, the drive, you know, they were driving at one time down, I think, about the 30-yard line when they lost the second fumble, or the second series, they lost that ball. And so, taking care of the ball, if the Panthers come out, based on what I saw in the first half, the Panthers come out and take care of the football, all they need is three yards every play. This defense is they really stepped up to the challenge and picked off the wire a couple of times. Tackling out front. When they do this attack, or they do make a mistake like that, the Grizzlies, to their credit, have been making them pay 
Second half, they will be on the right hand side of our our field and going from right to left. Tim, seven guys it takes to get that thing off the field. Eight guys, grown men, they're dragging that thing. What off are we talking field. about? It, this the is inflatable. The inflatable now. There's a, a series of men, one, two, maybe a dozen. Yep. Them that have to get that thing off the field. It's that's the Panther pick crew. I think that's them in these yellow shirts. You can see them all around out here. They have this little group outside, the ones that were cooking. Did you see them outside? I did, I did. That's called the Panther pick crew. I'm going to work on getting one of them guys up in the booth with us at halftime. And they, they run through, but they do a lot of other things too. And I'd like to get them up here and talk about uh, the money that they raise and, 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 and also, maybe we'll get some sampling of some of that food. I'm all, I'm all about yeah, that. yeah. I'm so all. I'm gonna, I'm gonna hook us up with the Panther Pit Crew. I'm gonna uh, talk to them. The kickoff is away, and it's out to the side of the field and touched by a Panther, and then goes out of bounds about the 22-yard line. Brady Brewer, he tried to catch it just missed it. That ball was—he was, was kind of in between. You never know if you should get the ball. I mean, if you're trying to receive that ball. You gotta catch it, and, and if you get close to that sideline, it starts entering your mind. Maybe should I let this thing get the ground and hit the penalty? But he went for it and just missed it. Nothing. All right, here we are, underway here in the second half. Panthers lead 14 to seven. Coming out to the 21 yard line, takes the snap, hands off to that fullback right up the middle, and that is Jacob Schofield. We were just talking about that. Just a few moments ago. It's going to set up all the other plays. If that play doesn't go, the other ones don't work as well. If that fullback pop up the middle, it doesn't work. It makes everything else so much more likely. Pick up of six yards again. Hand off to Schofield again. And he doesn't get much there, but I think that's all setting other, other plays up. It'll bring third and three. Sincerely trying to make the fake there. They just bumped into each other. Jacob Schofield carries for one yard. Tackle back to 12. One of the plays I haven't seen yet is the pitch out wide to Harrison, uh, where they take the ball and flip it out wide when um, Harrison is gone in motion. They come to the line of scrimmage, take a quick snap, pitch it out to the left hand side. Harrison has that's not Harrison, that is actually Shane Gonzalez. He gets enough for the first down across the 35 to the 37 yard line. Well, it wasn't the two handed push pitch like he. First down, Panthers at their own 37 yard line. Hand off to the fullback up the middle. He's free across the 50, the 45, the 40, across the 35. The ball fumbled, and the Grizzlies have it and going to recover. Great run. But the Panthers cough it up at the Grizzly 30-yard line. A great run. And we were just talking about taking care of the football, but I tell you what, he sure was putting out an effort. Good. Good. Pull back up the middle, pops it for 30. There he goes, step, running his car down, and trying to get the extra yards. Credit to the Grizzlies again, stripping the ball out. They've been instructed to do it, and they are doing it well. Disappointment by the Panthers as they have a great drive going and lose it on a turnover. Grizzlies come out, have the ball on their own 31-yard line. Drew McGuire back in the spread offense. Three receivers to the left. Again, one in motion. Come to the right, and that is Thompson. He gets the ball again, breaks across the 35 to 40. The 45-50 has open field across the 40 of Liberty Hill, across the 30. Finally run out of bounds at about the 26-yard line of the Panthers. Same exact play they scored the touchdown on, Tim. He gets the handoff. He takes two steps to the left and then cuts his back across the grain. Both times, there's nobody there to get on the play playing the initial push and not ready for the cutback. Big run by the Grizzlies. 
Ball is now Liberty Hill territory at the 30-yard line. Left-hand hash, one receiver out wide to the right, one to the left, two running backs in the backfield. Julian Morris is one of them. It's a handoff to the right-hand side across the 30, still on the feet across the 25 to the 23-yard line. That is Jarvis Henderson on the carry. I think that was only 27 to Shamir Nichols. Nichols goes off the field. Looks like he may have tweaked his ankle a little bit, but now there is the whistle blown, and I think Liberty Hills called a timeout. I think. And you know what? We'll take a quick break with them. We'll be right back. Score is 14-7, the Panthers. We'll be right back. You're listening to Panther Football on the KMAX Sports Vice Media Network. At Austin Pets Alive, the mission is to promote and provide the resources, education, and programs needed to eliminate the killing of companion animals. That means more happy pets joining more happy families every single day. In fact, Austin Pets Alive has saved more than 25,000 dogs and cats since 2008. And you can help. Adopt a new family member, help out with a donation, or roll up your sleeves and volunteer. If you have love, time, or money to spare, and we all have at least one of those, you are needed. Visit AustinPetsAlive.com to get started. Austin Pets Alive. Helping people help pets. Back here at Panther Stadium. Panthers leading 14 to 7 with 9.30 left to go in the third quarter of play. Grizzlies have the ball second and three in Panther territory at the 23 yard line. Drew McGuire, the quarterback for the Grizzlies. Offset Julian Morris, the running back. Hands off to Morris up the middle. He's going to pick up a short gain. Maybe no gain on the play, but they're probably getting forward momentum to the 21. They'll be about a yard short of the first down. It'll be third and one. Over trailer just got dragged about four yards. Julian Morris carries for two yards. He is a big kid, and, and I'll tell you what, right now, uh, Corin Thompson comes off the field, so he's not in there on this play, a crucial third down play. Big Morris is in the backfield, along with Jarvis Henderson. Snap and hand off to Morris, left-hand side. He bounces outside. He's going to lose yardage as he's gang-tackled by a whole den of Panthers. Led by Walker Beatty, uh, Jr. on the right side there. Great push by, by, by Morris for a four-yard And Robert Julian Beatty. Morris Walker now hops Beatty. off the field Number with looks right. like an ankle Eight. injury. He is Eight. on the Four track, on maybe five. a cramp on the sideline. Brings up fourth down five. for the Grizzlies, a crucial fourth down. Two wide outs to the right-hand side, one to the left. Drew McGuire takes the snap, rolls out to his left, looking for a receiver, throws it, and it is incomplete. And looks like he caught it, but out of bounds, and it's going to be turnover on downs to the Panthers, and the Panthers dodge another bullet. Drew McGuire pass. They get the ball back after coughing up on a fumble. And it looks like we have another referee discussion. I'm not really sure, but we've had some stoppages with referees. Referees getting the kinks out, Greg. We're getting the kinks out. The players are getting the kinks out. Coach Schoenfield, he was out past the 30-yard line. Oh, no, right? yeah. He was out on the field letting the refs know. And I don't know if it's a – oh. I'm not sure what just happened. But they made the players get back maybe. Really sure, but here we go. We're going to continue to play after some odd stoppage again. First and ten for the Panthers at their own 25-yard line. Handoff right to the right-hand side. Harrison he has the ball across the 30 to 32-yard line, and a nice first-down gain of what looks like about six yards, second and four. Real off. Yeah, here we go. 
Motion by Harrison, right hand side, inside handoff to looks like I believe it's Gonzalez right at the middle, gets across midfield down to the 45, 44 yard line before he's tackled. There's a big play up the middle, Tim. They gave it right back to him. He was running hard on that last play, and they gave it to him again. Great run by Gonzalez. 24 yards. And it is first down now in Grizzly territory at the 45-yard line of the Grizzlies. Panthers coming up the line really quick. And it's a keeper out the left hand side. Nobody's going to catch him across the 40, the 30, the 20, the 10. Five and touchdown. Jacob Searley. Pulling another play we haven't seen tonight out of the hat, and that's what caught the Grizzlies off guard. The keeper, Tim, he did a great job disguising it, hit it on his hip, rolled nice and slow to the open side of the field. There wasn't a Grizzly to be seen, and he caught in the open field. And picked him up and put him down. Nice and smooth quarterback. No, he did a great job, and, and you know, untouched, but he totally fooled uh, the Grizzly defense. 721 left. We have an extra point. 721 left in the third quarter. Extra point getting set. Matthew Shipley. Matthew Shipley getting ready to kick. There's movement. There's a flag on the play. Over thriller. Another great catch on the hold. Give him the holder of the game chips. He is good. Really really and it is now 21 to 7 with 721 left in the third quarter. We'll be right back. You're listening to Panther Football on KMAX Sports Vibe Media Network. Socialize with us. Yeah, man, I'll tell you what, that dang old internet, man, you throw it on there and point and click, 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 it's real easy. Man. On Twitter, at KMAX Sports, or catch us on Facebook, search KMAX Sports. Just another way, KMAX Sports is bringing your teams to you. Back here in the third quarter, 7-21. Left to go in the third quarter. Liberty Hill now leads 21 to seven. Great play call, I think, by Coach Walker and the Panther offense. Uh, again, another wrinkle that we haven't seen tonight. Matthew still be teed it up at the 40-yard line, getting ready to kick it off deep. And you know what? I, Shipley's got a good leg on him. You're right, he did put one way back in the end zone. You know, there's some dangerous weapons back there for the Grizzlies returning the ball. He gets into it again, and it's going to be fair caught at the one-yard line. And, Greg, that's another rule. If you don't know, the ball comes out to the 25-yard line. And these are one of the, the new rules that the, uh, the football has put in. Now, you're going to see it in college. You may not like it, but, you know, it is – I think it's a rule that's probably going to be here to stay, uh, preventing a lot of those collisions that are happening uh, with the, the, the kicking team and the receiving team. Grizzly start shop at the 25-yard line on the right-hand hash. Drew McGuire is the quarterback for the Grizzlies. done a really good job tonight finding some of the open receivers, even though he has two interceptions. He's done a really good job. Man in motion, fake handoff, handoff to Morris right up the middle, and he gets hit, a pickup of maybe two yards. The Panthers are doing a really good job. The kids, have, Morris is a big kid, and they're stopping him in his tracks when they hit him. And Morris is still hobbled, I can tell, uh, not 100%. Second down, eight. He's still in there. Second down and eight from the Grizzly 27-yard line. Two receivers to the left, two to the right. McGuire rolls out the left-hand side, his favorite play. Throws out wide, complete, and going to be a little short of the first down. I think that was complete to Jarvis Henderson. The 
be a little short of the first down. They're going to be a yard, a long yard to go. Third and a long one. And Julian Morrison, Morris is not in the game. He's been hobbled, but back there now is Lamont Slade at running back. Two receivers to the left, three receivers to the left. Now man in motion. They're going to hand it off up the middle to Blunt, and he picks up the first down, picks up a few yards out to the 37, 38 yard line. First down for the Grizzlies at the 37 yard line in Grizzly territory. Six minutes left to go in the third quarter. Panthers lead 21 7. Snap back, hands off to Blunt on the right hand side. He breaks across the 40, the 50, the 40 again. Finally brought down at the third Panther 35 yard line. Great run by Lamont Slade. Again, Grizzlies starting to move the ball. This is where they've had trouble when they make some really good gains, get it in Liberty of Territory and, and stall out. Now rolling out the left-hand side, another pass out in the flat. It's a first down again, complete, complete to Jarvis Henderson. That's their bread and butter play is rolling out to the right or the left and Liberty Hill is unable to solve that riddle. They know it's coming, uh, and they just are leaving a little bit too much space for those receivers. First and 10 now, getting deeper in Liberty Hill territory to the Liberty Hill 22-yard line. Two receivers to the right, one to the left. Morris is the running back offset to the left. Roll out to the left, under pressure, but he gets out of it. Looking downfield, he's going to keep himself running right up the middle. And at the five-yard line, he's going to get knocked down at the one. Picks up a nice block. And it's going to be first and goal from the one. Put Trenton Stewart in the pickle there. Stewart had a covering guy over there in the flat. Travel for 21 yards. Travel by him. Travel by him. Travel by him. First and goal in Grizzlies. First and goal. Drew McGuire with two running backs in the backfield. Morris is one of them offset to the right. He's going to hand it off to Morris left-hand side, and Morris looks like he's going to be close. They're not going to give it to him. He's short of the goal line. It'll bring up second down. Lamont Slade is the other running back. He's now off the right to the right-hand side, Morris to the left. They're going to hand off to Slade, and Slade is going to be hit short too. And they're actually, they're still going to mark him about the same spot. It brings up another short down play, but this time it's third down. Still short. Mike. Might we see something else from the Grizzly offense or another run? Slade and Morris in the backfield. They also put the tight end in the backfield. They head off to Slade and they hand off to him and he's going to make it in. Wait a second. No, now they cover it. They call a touchdown. It was close. He barely got across. A nice stand by the Panthers, but they were just able to not keep him out of the end zone. And it's a touchdown for the Glen Grizzlies. Now the point after attempt, snap is back. The kick is up and it is good. And we now have a seven point game again. Three minutes and 53 seconds left to go in the third quarter. The Panthers lead 21 to 14. Now coming off, it looked like the Panthers had that momentum and the Grizzlies, their offense actually is pretty good. Uh, the Panthers uh, are, are not able to get a stop right there, and it's now back to another good ball game. 
to enjoy the game tonight. Game. Game the Panthers right has bought some more hot dogs, pizza, chicken sandwiches. So well, the Panthers have proved they're able to move the ball, but they got to hang on to it. And if they can, like I said earlier, if they can control the ball and 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 protect it, I, I it's just hard to see them. Uh, the you know the, the Grizzlies haven't stopped them. The Panthers have stopped themselves. They really have. They really have. They've been three drives and just been the game because of that turnover. And it's been two of them, Tim, because they're trying to get extra yards, mm -hmm. fighting for extra yards, mm -hmm. and doing what, what the coach tells them to run hard. Mm -hmm. um, I really do credit to this Grizzlies defense for really doing it. Number two, Brady Brewer. Back deep Kyle is Kyle Harrison again, and it's going to be a short kick, and caught about the 25, and not much doing there as they kick it to an up back. They're kicking. They did that on purpose to keep it away from Kyle Harrison. Yeah, that's probably not a bad idea. Well, the ball is on the Liberty Hill 29-yard line. Let's see what the Panthers can do here. This is their second possession of the second half. The first one, they took it from the kickoff back down, and they drove the ball and was picking up good yardage and um, lost the ball on a turnover. Here they go with their first down play. Ball's on the right-hand hash. Snap. It's going to be a pass play. Throwing back across, has a receiver open, and again, it is dropped. Wide open receiver, unable to connect on that play. It'll bring up second down. Great play fake. Great play fake by Searley there. Drop back. Had a couple of different options. Decided to go down the sideline. And uh, they say two things bad can happen, Tim. We just saw one of them. He dropped it. Second down. And a handoff up the middle. And it is across the 40, the 50 into the Grizzly territory and Jacob Schofield the fullback makes a great run and there's a penalty on the end of the play. Extracurricular activity some frustration by the Grizzly defense there uh, after he broke free got the tackle uh, Schofield down the line. Seely tried to get out and do a, get a block. You love it when your quarterback's trying to run down the field and get in front for a block but that's just some frustration there by the Grizzly defense. And you do that right in front of the ref. Uh, <laughs> you're going to get called every time. Every time. And that's not a five yard penalty. That's a 15 yard penalty. On top of that big play, the ball now is placed at the 23 yard line. A big, big gain and uh, extra yardage with the penalty for the Panthers. Great job by Schofield. Ball's now on the left hand hash. Center comes up across the ball. Takes a snap, hands off to Harrison. He goes right up the middle, gets across the 20 to the 18 yard line. And it'll bring up second down and about six. Balls on the left-hand hash, 19-yard line, three minutes left to go until the end of the third quarter. The Panthers lead 21-14. to A very close contest tonight as far as the score goes, and even yardage, I believe. Uh, both teams have probably, I would guess, pretty similar yardage on the night. Second down, up the line of scrimmage. And it is going to be kept by the quarterback, and he's across the 15, the 10, and another touchdown by Jacob Searley. Great, great play fake and hidden ball by the quarterback. <laughs> Two times, a magician back there, too. Yes. He did not see the ball because he puts it on his hip, slow rolls it around. They've been getting those quick hitters that pull back up the middle, whether they bring the tail back underneath for the inside hand. Right. That, those linebackers are keyed so much on the movement of these Liberty Hill backs that nobody is accounting for the quarterback. Puts it on his hip. Again, wide open. Nobody touches them into the end zone. Here is the point after for the Panthers. The kick is up, and it is good. And the Panthers now extend their lead to 28-14 to over the Glen Grizzlies. At Two minutes and 41 seconds left. And I want to talk to you about, um, you know, a little bit about uh, the, the play fake. Coach Walker and I were just talking about this yesterday. 
during our interview about how the quarterback his handling of the ball and his deception of the ball and the way he can hide the ball makes makes this offense work so much well so much better I've seen quarterbacks in this Liberty Hill system that don't do near a good a job uh, I'm going to I'm going to bring up an old school name Braden Fickle who was the quarterback in the state championship year he was a master of, of deception at the ball quarterback I'm going to tell you what right now, Jacob Searley did a great job, and he's doing a great job doing that tonight. All night, he's when, whatever Coach Walker has tasked him to do, he has done it in spades. Whether he's, he's asked him to pass, he's been putting it on the money, when he's mm -hmm. asked him to run, he's been doing it. He has been in command of this offense. After the first couple of plays where they made some missteps, mm -hmm. since then, it really has been his team. And... 28 to 14 here with 241 left in the 30. And, and on top of that, he's thrown some nice passes. Here is the kickoff for the Panthers. Kick deep. It's going into the end zone, and the receiver is just going to. What? Oh, he didn't take a knee. I was a little. Oh, he put his hand up for the fair catch. So they're going to come out to the 25 yard line. The Glenn Grizzlies down. 28 to 14 with two minutes and 23 seconds left to go in the third quarter of play. This game far from over with this Grizzly offense. They can score quick and I'm assuming they can score in bunches if they give them the, give them the chance. You know, if you look down at that Liberty Hill defense, they all look about the same size. <laughs> Have you noticed that? <laughs> There's not a lot of big kids on the Liberty Hill defense. They're just, they're all very athletic kids on the defense. First and ten for the Grizzlies. Drew McGuire, quarterback still. Man in motion, right-hand side is Thompson. They're going to hand off to Thompson. That's the play they scored on, but the Panthers cover him up there. They've seen it one too many times. Somebody has done a good job. One of the coaches down there did a really good job of letting them know when he does that motion, he's going to cut back three, four Panthers there, uh, led by Trey Riley, uh, to, to stop that play before it even got started. Loss of one on the play. It is second and 11. Ball's on the right-hand side. Three receivers to the left. Look for a rollout to the left. It's possible that that's what he's going to do. No nope, straight drop back. Look at receiver. Throws down deep. Receiver has a step, and it's incomplete off the fingertips of Sam Martin down at the 40-yard line. Would have taken a great catch um, had he made it. Good throw by McGuire. Just Bring up third down. This is a crucial third down for both teams again. Panthers would like to get the stop and get the ball back since they have the offensive momentum going. No doubt going to see a passing play here. Look for, and it's interesting that they're flooding this right-hand side this time. Uh, look for a possible throwback. To the left-hand side, roll out to the right. It's going to be a screen to the left-hand side, and it is incomplete and dropped by the tight end, Nate Hatter. If I could have yelled it was going to the other yes. side, I would have been screaming. But right. They, they've done it now a couple of times. They bunch it to the short side right. and set up the screen on the left. If he had caught it, it might have been it might no, have no, a you're, play, but he, he put it on the turf, and now they have to punt. Going back deep for the Panthers is White Chaney. He is standing at about midfield. Fourth and four. All things go right. Panthers will get the ball back. It's a fake punt. He's going to the left-hand side, but the Panthers, he's I think, have sneaked this out, and he's going to lose yards on the play. That was a, that was a terrible fake punt. Walker made it. <laughs> Didn't buy it for no. one second. Did just held his ground and hopped all over him. Unbelievable coverage play by the junior number 88 there to stop that play from going one yard, Tim. That was just, but it was a terrible decision, in my opinion. Where it was in the game, where it was on the field. Uh, but the Panthers get the ball back. They're now at the 24 yard line. Takes a snap, pitches it out to. Uh, Gonzalez, he gets outside across the 20 down to the 15, the 14 yard line. A nice first down pickup, close to a first down. And now here it is. A team down 14 points, and now you have to deal with this 
running offense of the Liberty Hill Panthers over and over and over. Not going to see a pass here, Tim. Hand off to the fullback right up the middle. And Jacob Schofield picks up Greg Yards, the first down, down to the five-yard line. Number 41, Jacob Schofield carries for eight yards. We'd love to see the pitch here, Tim, to the wide side. I don't think we're going to see it, Greg. I think we may see the halfback run or a Harrison inside run. And I'm not, now that we're having a defensive substitution, it's a little weird. I, I'm not sure what happened right there either, but the Panthers are going to regroup, come back to the line of scrimmage, first and goal from the six-yard line, falls on the left-hand hash. There's only 40 seconds left to go in this third quarter of play. This probably will be the last play. They're going to hand it off right up the middle of the Schofield again, and he's barreling towards the end zone, gets brought down, a uh, yard shy. Give it to him again. Let the big boy get a touchdown. <laughs> He's worked hard tonight. Give it to let's see that fullback score tonight, Greg. He's done some work. And off to him again. It is a touchdown. <laughs> Jacob Schofield rewarded for his hard work tonight. Give him the ball three times in a row. And he puts it in the end zone. Tim, you asked to see the fullback. You just saw a steady yes. diet of it nice. over and over. We thought maybe we might see something else, but no, not not now, Tim. Here you go. You know what's coming, and can you stop it? No, I, I, the defense knew it too. I, I, the, 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 the horses up front, that offensive line, is, they're doing a great job. The extra point, Matthew Shipley. The kick is up, and it is good, and Liberty Hill now extends its lead 35 to 14 with only four seconds left at the end of the third quarter. And, I, you know, we haven't given any of those kudos out to the offensive line tonight, and the offensive line for Liberty Hill has done great. You know, they have opened up those holes. You know, it's 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 Keisner and, 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 and Taggart and Lipsinski and Lawrence and Montgomery and McWilliams at a tight end. These kids have really done a great job. And I played offensive line, and, and I know I, you don't look at me and think that I did, but I played offensive line there, Greg. And I'm telling you, you don't get your... You don't get the kudos that you get because usually, and, and you're usually the one getting uh, uh, yelled at for missing a block or giving up a sack or something. But these guys are doing a great job. If the offensive line is doing what it's supposed to be doing, all we're going to end up doing is talking about the end. Yes, sir. Because they're going to be out in the open field, and, and, and they are the unsung heroes of this offense. But they, they're, the, they're the guys that make it work. They're doing a fantastic job. Uh, opening those holes and, and getting that yards. I mean, the, the Panther offense now, if it would have been the fumble, I don't, I don't think they've been stopped tonight at all. And the kick is away. It's going to be a fair call in the end zone, and it's going to come back out to the 25-yard line. And you know, with this new rule, we're, we're not going to see a lot of returns. Because if you can get the ball to the 25 yard line every time, I mean, the, the kick's going to have to be short about the 10 yard line for you to have like our 15, for you to have that feeling of catching going, I can, I can do this. If you can kick it past the 10, you really have to think they're going to bring it up to 25 every single time. Right. First and 10 for the Panthers. I mean, for the Grizzlies, ball set right in the middle of the field. Drew McGuire, still at quarterback, takes a snap, hands off to Morris right up the middle, a gain of one. A little jump cut there, trying to get up the middle, couldn't make it happen. And that's going to put an end of the third quarter. Liberty Hill is leading 35 to 14. We'll take a quick break. You're listening to Panther Football on the KMAX Sports Bike Media Network. 
Boston Pets Alive, the mission is to promote and provide the resources, education, and programs needed to eliminate the killing of companion animals. That means more happy pets joining more happy families every single day. In fact, Austin Pets Alive has saved more than 25,000 dogs and cats since 2008. And you can help. Adopt a new family member, help out with a donation, or roll up your sleeves and volunteer. If you have love, time, or money to spare, and we all have at least one of those, you are needed. Visit AustinPetsAlive.com to get started. Austin Pets Alive. Helping people help pets. Last night, Leander defeated Liverpool twice, 43 to 3. We're back here at the start of the fourth quarter. Liberty Hill leading 35 to 14, and Grizzlies come out. Liberty Hill has all the offensive momentum now, and they're playing much better defense. Look for a lot more passes from the Grizzlies. It is second and nine. Three wide outs to the left-hand side. Looking left, going to go back to the right-hand side. A little screen play. It is complete. And the Panthers get on top of it, but not before he picks up a first down across the 35-yard line. That'll be a first down. Want to give a big shout-out to a former Liberty Hill Panther that played here. Jonathan Dutchin is listening in from Copenhagen, Denmark. I don't even know how to spell Copenhagen, Denmark. It, it is. It's, it's, it's further than Bertram. <laughs> we'll talk about that in a second. But first and ten for the Grizzlies. Three wide outs to the left-hand side. Man in motion going right. Hand off to that Nichols. And Nichols gets it. It's a fumble on the play. It's a scramble for the football. And the Grizzlies say they have it, and he is down. That's a long way away. We used to have a guy from uh, Carter Ware. Yeah, Carter Ware and his family used to listen from the Philippines. And now we have another uh, fan, Jonathan Dudgeon. Jonathan, uh, if you're listening, and I hear that you are listening, welcome to KMAX Sports. I remember calling your name several times when you played here before. Uh, a really good player, and thank you for listening and supporting uh, the Panthers. Second 11, handoff up the middle. Short gain on the play, third down. And we were talking about that, Greg, how people all over the world listen to Liberty Hill football. It isn't the people that are just right down the road. This is a home game. Jonathan doesn't know what's going on in this, in, 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 with the football unless we tell him. And so we are still looking for three more uh, the sponsors to help get three more Liberty Hill football games on the air this year. And I'll repeat Chuck Licata's number here in a, in a minute if anybody knows anybody. And the whistle's blown. It's third and seven, third and eight. But again, KMAC Sports is looking for sponsors to help uh, get the games on the air. We're short three games to get them on the air. And it is a timeout for the Grizzlies. But let me talk about that again. We're only going to be doing uh, five more broadcasts this year without support of the community or another sponsor uh, in the community. And if you'd like to step up and help fund the other three games, so parents and grandparents and relatives and Panthers fan everywhere, including Jonathan Dudgeon, so he can continue to listen to the game, please contact Chuck Licata at chuck at kmaxsports.com or call Chuck at 512-466-7751. As you know, KMAX Sports has broadcast since 2007, the state championship year, the second one, and broadcast now over 890 Panther, broad, uh, Panther games and events coming into tonight. Step up, help somebody, help Jonathan Dudgeon keep listening to the football games. So we're making a campaign to help Jonathan keep listening to the Panther games. That's what it's for, Greg. It's, it's for people like him to listen to the games. We're going to be back and play here third and eight. Two receivers to the right, two to the left. Now a man in motion going right. Snaps back, roll out right again, looking downfield, throws it, and it's hit up in the air and incomplete. And that was almost an interception. The Panthers have started to pick up on that and putting a man running below the route instead of the guy above him in the coverage. So very good adjustment by the by the coaching staff for Liberty Hill to, 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 to be able to pick up on that. Looks like they've finally done a good job of getting somebody out in the flat and shutting that down. 
Two receivers to the right on fourth down. They're going for it. One receiver to the left. Snap back, roll out to the right-hand side again, looking downfield, throws it deep, has Thompson down there, and it looks like to be complete. And they're calling it a catch in Liberty Hill territory about the 37-yard line. Big play by Thompson. Ran the out route, jump catch, got the feet down. Quality play there by number five. Keeps the drive alive. That was a fourth down play. Down to the 36 yard line of Liberty Hill. Three wide outs to the left, one to the right. Now we're going to straight drop back, looking right, throwing downfield, one on one coverage, and it is incomplete. Great coverage by the defender for Liberty Hill. Brady Brewer, one on one. You're on an island, son. What are you going to do? He's playing defense, Tim. Gets his head around at the last minute, knocks the ball out, doesn't interfere. Perfect coverage, perfect play. Second down. No, he had he was in his hip pocket the whole way. It was he did a great job. That's one of the best one-on-one coverages I've seen tonight. Second down and ten. With nine minutes and fifty seconds left to go in this game, the Panthers now lead 35 to 14. Three wide outs to the left, one to the right. Morris is in the backfield with the quarterback McGuire. Rolls out to the left, looking downfield, throws it downfield. And he's going to throw it over the head of the receiver. And I don't see a flag. But there's a man down, and that's actually Drew McGuire. Brendan Ketchum at the end of that play let McGuire know that the quarterback is able to be hit if he still holds the ball. Oh, big hit by Ketchum to come up and cause McGuire maybe to make a bad decision because there were some wide open people there and now maybe McGuire is feeling a little bit of that pressure and trying to score them all at once. When he was throwing those underneath passes, they were moving the ball. Mm -hmm. Now he's trying to throw it down the field to, to, to score them in bunches and uh, it, it cost them. Well, the timeout for Glenn, uh, I think since the quarterback, Drew McGuire, has a little hobbled, uh, they want to regroup here. And, you know, when he comes out of the game, I think they have an athlete that's going to go in as quarterback. And I believe it's Thompson. Corin Thompson, who's been uh, an amazing uh, impact in tonight's game. No, he really has been the guy that's done everything for them. Like I said, they've been handed to him on that fake uh, run. He's the one that's been getting the ball on that cutback. He's also been catching it. Um, made that great play on fourth down. He really is a catalyst for this offense. So it's third down and ten for the Grizzlies. And I just got a message from my son. Uh, I think he's listening. And it we used to have this big joke about pierogies, did we not? We love pierogies. We love pierogies and pierogies for everybody. And my son just talked about they had pierogies on the ship that he's on. He's in the <laughs> in the Navy. So third down and ten. Grizzlies got a new quarterback, and he is going to run an option play to the right hand side. Pitches it wide. Picks up a few yards as he pitches it out to Stubblefield. Corin Thompson is the quarterback. Well, you got a new wrinkle now. Uh, it looks like Thompson has the ability to run the pitch and, and, and might be a, a more of a, uh, an option type quarterback. We saw it there very first play. Pick up a four off the outside down. Now, fourth down, you're going to have to come in cold and throw it. Fourth down and about six yards to go for the first down. And Thompson's still at quarterback. There'll be two wide outs to the left-hand side, one to the right. Julian Morris is still in, at running back. He goes to the right-hand side. There's a rollout to the right, and Thompson's going to keep it running himself, and he's not going to get any yardage. As a matter of fact, he's going to lose, and they lose yardage and turn the ball over on downs to the Panthers, and we are going to see a steady diet of running plays between tackles I believe now for the rest of the game, leading 35 to 14. Tough situation for Thomas to step Thompson to step Thompson, into there. Thompson, um, for a one yard loss, number four. Great just, over you're having to come out now. You're running the offense. You're running the, the running back out in the flat. Now you're now you're running the thing. Came up really short. Come up to the line of scrimmage. Get ready to and they hand it off. Right hand side to Gonzalez. 
and he picks up nice first down yards, a pickup of about eight or nine yards. Tim, really impressed Shane Gonzalez, senior running back. He has been getting the ball quite a bit, and when he gets it, low to the ground, making people miss. And off to the fullback, right up the middle, and he's got a first down and more. Gets finally tackled in Grizzly territory at the 43-yard line. A great run by Jacob Schofield. Well, Gonzalez goes the other way. Now you got to do a 41 up the middle. Schofield. Right. Schofield carries for Quick hitter. Yards. Right up the middle. This Liberty Hill offense is starting to click. And we've still not seen a pitch to the outside. Schofield's coming off the field, hobbling a little bit, so we got a new fullback in there. Coming up to the line of scrimmage, Robinson will be the new fullback. And they're going to hand off to the right-hand side. That is up the middle to Kyle Harrison. He picks up about five on first down. Great patience by Harrison there to wait for his blocks, to get set, to make the cut. Didn't rush, let the offense settle in, get on their blocks, picks up five. Second down, five. Second down and five. The clock is still ticking. Seven minutes and 45 seconds left to go in this game. The Panthers lead the Grizzlies 35 to 14. Second down. Man in motion. Hand off to the fullback right up the middle. Still on his feet across the 30. The 25 down to about the 23 yard line is Robinson. Nash Robinson, Jr. His first carry. Yes, sure I believe so. That was a good run. Pick the first down. Next man up. And Liberty Hill does so well at that. Is that you know, in a lot of repetition and practice with both the first and second team, these guys are ready to go and eager to play. Again, now handoff to Harrison. He cuts back in the middle. A short pickup of a couple of yards down to the 22-yard line. Jim, you called it. We, we knew this was going to happen. We knew this is how this game was going to end up right Harrison now. Carries Just four, three yards, two, three yards. Every time they're not running the mix, they're not mixing in any passes. Second out, they're not seven. mixing in any pitches. It really the is. The letting the big guys up front open up holes. And these backs are patiently waiting for those blocks to set and firing off their hips when they do. Second down and eight, maybe seven. Balls at the 21-yard line. Panthers run up to the line of scrimmage. We're going to snap this thing quick as we have all night long. Shirley takes the snap, hands off to the fullback. No, quarterback keeps it again, and he's going to run wide to the left-hand side, gets the first down across the 10, run out of bounds about the seven-yard line. Well, we said we weren't going to see a pass. No, he tried. There it was. But credit, Shirley, for not trying to force anything. He did what a good quarterback does when people are covered up. Okay. Get to the corner. First down. You're right. He made a really good decision there. I, I've, I've been impressed with him tonight. He, he's done a really good job. Command of the offense, and uh, these running backs have to run hard for him. First and goal from the seven-yard line. Takes a snap. Hands off the fullback. It's on the turf. It's fumbled. But I think the Panthers have recovered. And Searley jumps, but let's be clear, Searley didn't fumble that ball. No, he did not, but he recovered it. <laughs> he recovered it. I want to make that clear. We just didn't want to cheat him. He handed the ball off to the fullback, and it, it, the fullback dropped, uh, fumbled the ball, and Searley covered it up. And again, I don't think he just fumbled it. The, the, the defense there, straight up the middle, uh, the Grizzly defense, wiping at the ball, trying to get it out. Second and goal from the eight-yard line. Hand off to Harrison off right side, and he's going to get in the end zone. It looked like he was tackled about the five, but he was able to maintain his feet. And, you know, he's not a big guy, so he's not a power running back, but I tell you what, he's a very strong player and was able to get into the end zone for a touchdown. Credit Searley for getting on the loose ball and giving it to Harrison oh, right. on the next play. And good hard running, patient running, Tim. Patient running by these Liberty Hill backs to let the blocks get set. Here is the point after. 
kick is up and it is good and Liberty Hill extends its lead 42 to 14 with five minutes and 20 seconds left to go in this game and I want to go back just a little bit. You know, Liberty Hill's doing great, but I do want to go back to these broadcasts. Jonathan Dudgeon and now my son, Ty Deans, listen to this game, right? So we have a guy from Copenhagen, Denmark, and another guy from Lamore, California, in the middle of California, listen to the game. And that's what this is about. That's what these broadcasts are about, is getting these games to people that want to listen to them, that can't be here. And uh, so, again, if, if you can help out in any way and, and, and sponsor the broadcast, uh, I, I promise you the, there's so many listeners out there. There are people that listen to it on replay uh, the next day and the next day and the next day. A lot of these kids listen to it. The parents listen to it on replay. And, and I've heard some people have even listened to it in the stands live, you know, even though it's a little bit of a delay. Uh, so if you can help out, K KMAX Sports, call Chuck, 512-466-7751. That's Chuck at 512-466-7751. The kickoff is away, and the spare caught at about the 6, so it's going to come out to the 25-yard line. And with 5 minutes and 15 seconds left, the Grizzlies, you know, it's, it's, they're, down, they're down almost 30 points. And, and um, you know, I know they still want to have some successes here. They can use these this series here to help uh, springboard them in the next week. But they're not giving up. This is one of those games, Tim, that you talk about the game being much closer than the score indicates. 42-14, uh, not really indicative of how this Grizzly uh, team has played. Looks like Thompson's going to remain in at quarterback. Drew McGuire went off the previous series. Morrison motion right-hand side. They're going to throw it out to Mor Morrison the flat. A big running back gets the yardage and looks like he's going to pick up a first down. I haven't seen that play. No. Game and not <laughs> sure why because great catch coming out of the backfield. Uh, by, by, by Big Julian Morris. Morris no, that was actually a good play to add to the stuff that they've been doing. That's a great uh, additional play off that package. First and 10 at the 37-yard line. They hand off to Morris right up the middle. And he's going to pick up a few yards, but he's still on his feet, finally brought down by three Panther defenders. Corey Jellison in on the tackle. Second and seven, four minutes and 30 seconds left to go in this game. Panthers still leading 42 to 14. Two wide outs to the right hand side, one to the left. Running back in the backfield. Thompson hands off to Morris up the middle again. And he breaks a tackle. He's in the free. Only one man to beat. And he is going to score. The Panthers had another breakdown there up the middle. And it's a touchdown for Julian Morris. My hat's off to number 21. Julian the Morris. Julian Morris. Is one of the biggest running backs out on the field, if not the biggest, sure. for sure. He came out of the, he came out of that that, that line with a full head of steam and uh, wasn't going to be stopped. And he outran some of the defensive backs for Liberty Hill. They weren't going to catch him. He had, he had some purpose on that run. Great great way to break break some tackles and find the find the goal spot. Pedro Soto on for the Grizzlies to kick the attempt the extra point kick. Snaps back. He kicks it right up through the uprights, and it's good. And with four minutes left to go in this contest, the Liberty Hill Panthers remain in the lead, but now lead 42 to 21. Four minutes left to go in this contest. And again, breakdown in between the tackles is where the damage was done. Just a solid solid run by a good football no, player. No, true. And, and, and 
once he got through, once he broke a couple of those tackles, there was nobody in the middle of the field. A lot of people, you know, they don't have anything spread out there. A lot of those Liberty Hill defenders up on their guys on the line. Uh, we've been saying, uh, you know, Trent Seward, Wyatt Cheney, really been playing like a deep linebacker. They haven't been in a, uh, in a true free safety safety type position. Um, and so when you get by that, that, that second level, there's a lot of yards out front of And he leapfrogged over a defender that got in front of him, and he jumped over him. A very athletic move. Are you just going to see a kickoff or an onside kick here, Greg? What? Four minutes left. You're down by 21 points. Any predictions? They'll squib it and hope to get it. And Liberty Hill picks it up at the 40. It's going to be turned across the 45 down the midfield. It picked up. Drake Overpriller on the return. He's, he's had himself a nice game tonight. Yes, he is. You know, he's holding on the extra point. He, he's the hand, one of the hands guys right here on the return. I think he made a play earlier on the defense. But that that's a long name to put on back of a jersey if they had their names back. <laughs> Hand off to the fullback right up the middle across the 45 to 40, 35, 30, 25, 20. Nash Robinson, a great run, filling in from his fullback position. Super job. Again, you're going to hear me say it again. I'm just going to keep saying it over and over. Great patience by the Liberty Hill running backs to let their blocks get set and have the patience to not take those two extra steps or three extra steps, even though they might be there, wait for the guy to get out in front, and next thing you know, you're going to be in the clear, and these guys really have been patient in letting their blocks get set. First down from the 21-yard line of the Grizzlies, three minutes and 15 seconds left. Hand off to the left-hand side, looks like it is Harrison. He picks up a few yards, will bring up second down. Second down and six. Like the ball spotted at the 17 yard line. Quick snap, handoff right up the middle again. Pickup of a couple of yards. Big hit there by Bryson Hunter for the Grizzlies. Third down and four. Plays coming in from the sidelines. Justice Weiss is relaying the play in. Two minutes left to go in this game. Panthers up to the line of scrimmage. And there's movement by one of the running backs. And that's going to push them back. On the play is false start against Liberty Hill. They're going to have to reset again, losing those five yards they just got. I haven't seen too many false starts. No, haven't we haven't seen too many procedure penalties by this Liberty Hill team. Great sign to start the season, and procedure wise, they've really been keeping it tight. Third and nine. And pitch out to Harrison. No, it's not Harrison. Cuts back inside to the 10. That is Simpson again. Number 42, Blake Simpson carries for 10 Simpson yards. standing straight up, making cuts, and uh, get, picking up the first down. First and goal. Liberty it's Hill. now a first down, first and goal. The ball sitting at the 10-yard line. The We're now at a minute 20 left to go in this game. Hand off the left-hand side to Simpson again. He's piled up at about the seven-yard line. It will be second and down, second and goal. Now one minute left to go in this game. Liberty Hill leading 42 to 21. 
Beverly Hills banging at the door. Some extra guys getting to come into the game. Searly Stewart, quarterback, takes the snap. Pitches again out to Simpson, and he is going to barrel his way into the end zone. Simpson lowering his shoulder. Touchdown for Blake Simpson. Nothing better as a running back, Tim, <laughs> when there's one guy between you and pay dirt. Simpson wanted it more and oh, just man. absolutely lowered the boom and, and got his six points. <laughs> Solid run off the right side there. That's one of those plays in film session you want them to rewind it over and over <laughs> and over and over again if you're Blake Simpson. Show it to me again, Coach. Show it to me. Snaps back. The point after attempt is up, and it is good. And Liberty Hill now extends its lead to 49 to 21. Matthew Shipley, 7 for 7 on the night. Yep. He's also had been, been perfect on his kickoffs, been kicking them deep. Uh, Tim, his extra points are probably good from 30, 40 no, yards as it's hit. So, it, it, again, you get into a situation where you need to have a field goal, you got to love your junior kicker, Matthew Shipley, because – he has been spot on all night. And we know that Overpillar's putting the ball down because he's catching everything that comes back. Which puts me at a question I'm going to ask Coach. What is Simpson's, what is Shipley's range? Give us an idea, you know. What's it, what, where could we expect him on a fourth down play in the future in a ball game? We don't know, right? So, but he does have a strong leg. Fredericksburg, nine, all four quarter scores. So here come the Panthers back on the field. This is... Uh, going to be a kickoff, 49-21 is the lead for the Panthers. We're about two plays, maybe three away from the end of this ball game. The Panthers don't want them to return the ball here more than likely. And, and uh, you, you kick it deep. And, but they're going to return this ball. I don't think they're going to fair catch this one. But we shall see. The kickoff is set. Off it goes. See that the six, seven yard line return right up the middle. And the Panthers are going to swarm him up right about the 25 yard line. And the Grizzlies are going to come onto the field with 22 seconds left. You know, they throw a pass play or they just run this clock out. I know, what, I know what we'd like him to do, but that, we're not coaching the team. <laughs> Still the start defense out there. And end this one with some... Uh, I think they don't want to give another inch. Grizzlies have nothing to hang their head, at, head on tonight. They, 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 a lot of positives tonight that they've had. Running the right hand side, still on his feet, gets close to a first down is Stubblefield. And it's 14 seconds left to go. And it's enough for a first down, so they're going to start running the clock. That might be the last play. I don't know if they're going to get one off. They may try to run one more, five seconds. Three receivers to the left. They're going to snap it, get another playoff. Throw incomplete pass, and that will do it. That is the ball game, folks. That is the ball game. 49 to 21 is the final for Liberty Hill, and the Panthers kick off this 2018 campaign with a win. A lot of positives to come out of tonight's game. Tim. Started out a little rocky. Yeah. Ball was on the turf. Offense not looking that great. Rust clearly on these Panthers. Mm -hmm. But then slowly started knocking it off. The defense also up against it, playing a pretty strong team with athletes that were getting open in space, could break tackles, um, and really just did what this Liberty Hill team has done countless times in the past, rely on this offense to move the ball in small chunks, hit them with big plays. Um, Searly 
clearly the player of the game in my mind from the offensive side of the ball, how he commanded the offense, how he worked with those fake plays, and if his receivers could have helped him out a little bit, he would have had a big chunk of yardage in the air as well. Um, and, and listen, like I said, three things happen when you throw the ball. Two of them are bad. And unfortunately for the Liberty Hill Panthers, that happened a couple times. He didn't get picked off nope. because he was throwing it to his guys. They just <laughs> didn't get a lot of chances right. to, to, to catch it. So uh, you look for that probably to change in the future. That wrinkle, he's got a cannon and, and, and an accurate one at that. So um, I'm looking forward to see the evolution of uh, this passing game because we've seen it now at its iteration. And then you have to figure it's only going to get better from here. You know, as I watch this unfold, as the teams come together there at halftime, uh, Greg, you heard me talk about how close these two schools are. I saw several kids hugging each other from acknowledging their friends uh, over there, uh, their opponents. Some of their opponents are friends of theirs. I see a coach from Liberty Hill talking to one of their players. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm telling you that this is going to long-term develop into a rivalry game, being so close. Liberty Hill burn it is a rival game, and Glenn is so much closer than burn it <laughs> to this school. And so I can see down the road this turning into a rival game. And if it is, this is the start of the rivalry game right here, Liberty Hill winning tonight. Now you're right about Searley. I'm very impressed. It's, it's, it's very, very well composed. And you don't talk about a quarterback for Liberty Hill very often. And, and, and having the, the, a big impact on the game, this kid did. And uh, uh, I'm excited about where this team's going to go. Uh, defensively, they did some nice things. We saw some really good coverage. Downfield deep coverage, they're very good. The only place that they were getting beat was those floods on the right or left-hand side. And, and uh, looks like they started to figure some of that out late in the second half. But, but deep, they, they were playing very good. Seward. Brewer, Montez, Cheney. I mean, Wyatt Cheney was all over the field, has a couple of interceptions, um, making tackles. He's he's the one that was that was kind of assigned to to try to, to try to hunt down uh, Corn Thompson, and, and, and for the most part was doing it. Uh, just really impressed with these defensive backs, um, linebackers as well. These guys did a good job stopping it up the middle. Uh, Austin Knox. Great game. Walker Beatty, great game. Um, team defense um, and team offense. Tim, that, that's how you win ball games, right? Right. And, and kudos again to the offensive line. They did a fantastic job. We can't talk about the running backs without great play from the offensive line. And I think all the running backs for Liberty Hill did a very good job. We saw great runs out of, out of Schofield and Harrison and Gonzalez and Blake Robinson and even Nash Robinson coming in and, and, and filling it fullback for Schofield. And so there's a lot of positives coming off of this win tonight. And I also know Coach has things that he's going to work on. You know, ball control, we've got to do a better job at that. You know, next week playing Hutto, we'll talk about it. Uh, we're going on the road next week playing Hutto, one of the top teams in the state, with one of the top quarterbacks in the state, one of the top receiving scores in the state. We're going to find out just how good these defensive backs are next week. They're going to get tested. They're going to get tested. And and Hutto is going to get tested defensively as well. I know that we're going to we, – this offense is going to uh, – this is a great start. Keep up with the ball control. But there weren't a lot of negatives other than putting the ball on the turf, I think, like four times. Other than that, this offense was, was – and, and the drop passes. That's – that's the two negatives, is the four fumbles, I think there was four. I'm, gonna, I'm throwing out a good guess. There were two on the first drive alone, and two more that I know of, and I think three drop passes. That's the only negative of the offense tonight. It's, Those are big negatives, though. And still, you put 49 points no, in the board. exactly. You, you, you really easily had 20 yeah, more. Yeah. Oh, not easily. Even, not even yeah. bat an eye at it. So they, they, did, they did stop themselves when... Uh, right. When, when those when those turnovers and or drop passes happen. Well, Chuck Licata said he tuned in and listened to the last play. That was 
anticlimactic, Chuck. So, <laughs> <laughs> but thanks for tuning in. So, <laughs> pierogies for Chuck. For pierogies sure. for Chuck. And pierogies <laughs> for Chuck. So, hey, my friend, great to call with you again. I'm looking forward to nine, at least nine more games. We need to get these other three games covered, as we talked about, because uh, uh, we need to get uh, who. Who was it? In Copenhagen, yeah, Copenhagen, Copenhagen, Denmark. Copenhagen, Denmark. Where did I write that down? It's on that sheet right there, probably. I don't remember. But I got to look that back up. I think you covered it up. But anyway, we got to get these people listening to the game, those th other three games. Absolutely. So Absolutely. we need some people in the community to step up and get these other three games covered. And, and I'm looking forward to it. There it is. Jacob Dudgeon, Copenhagen, Denmark. We got to get him listening to the game. Ty Dean. Lamore, California, Chuck Licata, wherever he's at. <laughs> we got to pick. We got to get these games covered, and I, I'm excited for the season, Greg. I really am. And uh, this was a great first start game, um, and and we'll be on the road next week. So again, I want to thank all the listeners. Thank you for tuning in, and we've had a wonderful first night of of, of high school football. The Liberty Hill. Uh, wins 49 to 29 21 tonight we thank you for listening we look forward to next week for that huddle liberty hill matchup and want to thank all you guys and you have been listening to the liberty hill vibe network liberty hill football we'll see you next week we're glad you enjoyed the KMAC Sports Broadcast. But did you know that you can purchase a copy of this or any KMAC broadcast for personal use? Whether you're making a highlight video or just want to be able to enjoy this game years in the future, send us a note to info at kmacsports.com. That's I-N-F-O at kmacsports.com. Let us know which games you're interested in. We'll set it up for a small fee. We can even do some editing for you. And the great thing, any purchase will send a portion of the proceeds to your school. Enjoy the game now and keep it forever. Or just any broadcast for personal use. Hit us up. Info at kmaxsports.com. Bring your teams and your highlights to you. We are KMAX Sports.